Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Let me see, let me know, let me understand. Are you praying? Father, open my eyes. I have come to see, I have come to understand. Hallelujah. Growth and um, and development, whether it is spiritual, whether it is physical, any process that has to do with the transition of a man from one realm to another never occurs by default. Please take notes. This, this is just to establish something before we get to the word. That means that it is not possible. Physics tells us that our work on earth tells us that, that the only thing that grows automatically is your age. Every other thing must be engaged to grow. You don't have to do anything to add to your age. Once you are alive and the time comes, the year recycles, you are plus one, ready or not. But every other thing, your spiritual life, please listen, your relevance, your understanding, your transformation, every other dimension of your life must be engaged for growth to be possible. That means that if this gentleman becomes a higher and a better version of himself. You cannot say it happened by mistake. Are we together? If Saul becomes Paul and is mightily used by God, it's not just that God chose him. Uh -uh. That growth and that transition happened because he engaged certain truths. I will continue to drum it in this house. Why? Because you see, the principles that make for growth, for impact, and for success are finite. Please understand this. The principles that make for growth, for impact, and for success are finite. They are principles you can piece together and say these are the keys that make for it. It is our pursuit of God and our pursuit of knowing him that is infinite. Are you getting what I'm saying now? We will never exhaust the knowledge of God. But as far as the principles that make for kingdom relevance, that make for our usefulness, the principles are finite. This should be good news for someone because it then means that I can allocate time and know these things 
so that the only thing that remains in my life is seeking and knowing God no longer learning principles a time should come in your life where your entire time is spent in fellowship and growth with God not trying to be sure whether this is the key to this and that no and this is what by the grace of God God is helping us achieve in this place if you believe that the principles of the kingdom are haphazard or they are so infinite are we together the principles that make for our relevance as far as this dispensation is concerned please listen to me they are captured in this truth and they are finite they are finite that means that you can collect them that body of information and study them and know that as far as these dimensions are concerned god has helped you it is not when you will or if you will arrive is when you will arrive at that point your life is reduced to worship and praise your learning is god your subject is god not prosperity are we together not how to parent children not how to succeed not how to engage restoration not how to speak peace it's a cause if your entire life is spent trying to learn these things because god as a subject is worth your lifetime all of these auxiliary things about god that we study is to be able to give us the convenience to clear these distractions so that we can now focus ourselves on him and his glory are you getting what i'm saying now yes. you will never be able to centralize your pursuit on god and him alone when there are all kinds of distractions in your life children here different things happening in your life and you don't know what spiritual law to engage it will distract you all these things are the things around god they are not god they are his ways my phone is not me it's around me you can learn how to use my phone it doesn't mean you know me are we together now so we must trust god for grace accelerated grace to be able to capture these things establish their results in our lives and then you are reduced to a point where as far as your personal work is concerned it is god only god ever are we together it was a preacher that taught us he says of reading many books there is no end and he says much learning is a weariness to the flesh then he says this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commands he said this is the whole duty of man let him that glory yet glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me not that he bought a car not that he bought a house are we together not that he raised children well all of these things are important but let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you must trust god for grace and quick understanding isaiah 11 and verse 2 quick understanding you can understand late it's still not a blessing understanding will bless you if it is quick because everything in life is time tagged you don't have all the time spending all my life learning about money learning about greatness learning about leadership as important as those things are you will find out that nothing will be left to really seek god if our generation does not learn this we will be a generation full of principles and no encounter we will have principles of a b and i teach you principles all the time but the principles are supposed to help you stabilize so that you reduce yourself back to the point where you are no longer bothered about what to eat what to wear how to be great the principles are finite now you can focus on him he becomes your object 
he becomes your pursuit he becomes your everything this is the place of power this is the place of true relevance because let me tell you this everything in your life minus the knowledge of god will still leave that vacuum you know many people think that the moment you make a lot of money or you become very famous or you become all of these things minus god you will still be able to go around because we say those in the world there are people who don't love god and yet they are rich you need to hear their honest confession to see how irritating life can be without god god designed man to be frustrated without him is his design is part of his intelligence he designed it to be impossible to be fully fulfilled if he's not in that factor that equation so when someone tells you i'm doing well without god that person is a liar i'm telling you it's only a matter of time riches can deceive they are important you see how many of you have seen little children and you buy a bicycle for your child your child will enjoy that bicycle even the injury will not matter but two weeks later you see that bicycle in the rain he has exhausted it and it's all right that's how life is without god you can get a certificate and be happy and after five years the same thing you laughed at you now hate it because it seemed not to give you what you thought it would produce then you turn your pursuit to something else finance and then you press through and make all the money and ignore god and then for a while you are happy because you are buying properties and you can now be at the priority level of living and then very soon you will find out that things cannot be god hmm. are you getting what i'm saying now please listen then you can choose to replace things with people like a husband like a wife like children like physical earthly relationships and they will bless you for a long time except for the fact that the jealousy of god preserved a dimension only his size can feel no matter what else in your life you bring i tell you this it will take time but you will know that life without god is not living you're all i want You're all I ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you, honey. Listen, let me tell you how God trains us. When you start your spiritual journey, it is God then when you know a bit about him he will help you to know his ways and the end of your life should be like the beginning back to god so it is god but then he gives you the things that pertain to life him godliness but he knows that somewhere along the line your children need to go to school you need to eat so he will delve from him he's still there but the focus for many years will be his ways and many times we, for, we forget that his ways is not the ultimate. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you will find life. And you will not come to me. Say the scriptures testify. A way leads to somewhere. So when all is said and done with the cars and the fame and the accolades and everything. God says I kept my part five years of your life i didn't bother you so much again here and there you had encounters but now that you know my ways now that you are not thinking about money again now that you know what it takes to raise your children can i have my time back and he said lord i became famous on my way and i found out that my fame is better than this 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 me and you i i started in innocence but as i continued i found out that there was fame on the way and now i'm no longer interested in you that's what happens to a lot of people even learning the ways of god 
as the ultimate pursuit is still not the perfect strategy. The ways of God are important, but at the back of your heart, please hear me, the end of your spiritual journey must still be the way you started. In the beginning, God. In the end, God. That's what it means to be Alpha Omega. So right now we are in a season where you no longer may be having the dreams you used to have again. Remember those times? It was not about principle or anything. You were not seeing any attack. It was just all of those encounters. And it seems to be suspended for a while to allow you to be relevant within the context of your... It's not backsliding. He's showing you his ways. Sometimes some of you will still go back and say, Lord, I want it before. He says, I know. I'm waiting for you at the other side so that means if you focus on knowing his ways is proof that you really want to meet him fast so that you will finish with these matters and it will give you room to say lord i'm done i didn't know that i can be established fast by the grace of god i do not have to cry for what to eat again i'm not coming to you complaining about an attack i've conquered that i found the keys that give me victory lord i am here with you for fellowship what do you want, son? You, you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord. It is not only being an unbeliever that can keep you away from God. Lack of quick understanding can keep you away from God. You will be close to him, but not with him. You are around him learning everything. Imagine that I come to your house and all I keep doing is going to your kitchen. I can eat your yam. It's your yam, but it's not you. I can go and use your restroom. I can even drive your car. I will leave your house saying I met you. It's a lie. I didn't meet you. I met the things around you. Those things are called conveniences. When you go to see a guest, you don't go there to eat. But then in seeing that guest, sometimes before he arrives, they will serve you. Does it happen to you? They will say, okay, this, what would you like? Sometimes they will even call you to a table. If you get carried away by the buffet and you sit there and forget that there is a meeting, you spent three hours there. It was just supposed to solve your problem. So that when you spend that time seeing him, hunger will not distract your concentration. God knows that it's better to serve him in your house than a rented apartment. So in as much as you start there, you say, son, let me show you my ways. Not to compete you with Bill Gates. It's a foolish agenda. It's a purposeless, kingdomless agenda. There is no glory to God competing with Bill Gates. Well, that's not your assignment. Your assignment is to rise to a point where the ways of God are mastered so that you reduce sky. Look, my brothers and my sisters, listen to what I'm teaching you. The ways of God are powerful, but if you stay there, you will not know God. And at the end of it, you will live your life in a void that will frustrate you. I asked for children, you gave me children. I asked for a job, you gave me a job. Listen, I asked for promotion, you gave me promotion. I asked to be a celebrity and you took me to the nations. I asked for money, you gave me money. I asked for dollars, you gave me dollars. I asked for revelation, you gave me revelation. Listen, I asked for word of knowledge, you gave me. I asked for miracle power you gave me. And then after all of that, God steps back, different from everything you've had, and say, I'm still here. And many times we say, Lord, do I really need you again? Do I need you? Whatever I cannot do, I can outsource. I have the influence. And God stands back and says, was this all I meant to you? 
Yes, it is true that I am the way, but I am not only the way. The way is how you start. It should lead you to life. It's a person. The passion with which many people and the slow rate of spiritual transformation is becoming dangerous. It's one thing to be in ignorance, but it's another thing to transit slowly. Time is running and time is fixed. The next 20 years of your life, if you are still learning what you are learning now, is no longer a blessing. Imagine a man of 45 years in primary school. Say, I can make it. There's, yes, you can make it. There's nobody that says you cannot make it. But you will be sleeping while they are teaching because your body does not expect you to be at that level. While they are teaching the children, spell uh, this and that and that, you will be a nuisance to the people and it will not be your fault. Let me tell you this. The prayer for speed is a real prayer. Most believers pray for speed because they have a passion to make a statement. Either to loved ones, let people in my family know I am this. As good as that is, it's not a very valid reason. Speed. That God can establish a man early. 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 What is the purpose of delay? Something, an effect on your time. Not you, your time. I hope you realize that all Satan is really interested in is your time. Hmm. So he uses you to do something to your time. Are we together? The ways of God are very important, but the ways of God is not God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. I am Alpha Omega. Why am I sharing this? Because we are in the face of our lives now when we should focus on learning the ways of God first. Please hear what I'm saying. There are many believers who think that every time we teach on the principles of the kingdom, it should be encounters all the way. No, you'll be frustrated. The matters that pertain unto life will hit you and will derail you. No matter who you are, it's not something you can do anything against. You may be wicked to yourself, but when you watch your children ask you questions you cannot answer, it will dry down your life. You see a lot of people will tell you, in 1995, I was the prayer secretary of so so, -so fellowship. And right now, the person is not even born again. He said, God was not there for me. I served God, but now when it had to do with God blessing my own family, he left me. And God said, no, you didn't understand the sequence. It starts with me. Then at a point, I step back to let you learn my ways so that you can obtain the things that need to give you the freedom and the liberty to return back to me. Occasionally, these things can distract you. That's why retreats are powerful. Because they take you back. And that presence and that atmosphere, once again, God says, I'm still here. Woe betides a man who spends his whole life chasing things, things, things. To look for a car for a lifetime is not an achievement. That at the end of your life, if I say, what did you get? I have five estates, 21 degrees, 30 children, 8 wives, chieftaincy titles, traveled around the nation, and God is just waiting for his name, and he's not in the equation of your destiny. That's what many of our loved ones did. They started with God, but when God was calling them to learn his ways, they thought it was the devil. And they casted God away and said, Lord, I will keep learning your ways. And hunger forced them to leave God. To get back to learn his ways. And the spirit of revelation was not there. And so their pace is slow. And right now they've been 40 years trying to learn how to be rich. 40 years trying to learn how to be leaders. 40 years trying to learn how to be great. 
So when you say, let's, let's spend time worshiping God, let's spend six hours praying, the person looks at you and says, are you stupid? Six hours praying, what am I telling God? All that I've been telling him, is he not listening to? It doesn't make sense to invest that kind of time when you are hungry. When you are starting out, God will allow it for a reason. You notice how great ministries start. They usually start with these moments of encounter. That's how we started. You understand? God will not tell you anything about money, marriage, children, prosperity, increase, influence, ministry, ethics, greatness. Leave all of that. It's just him. People coming back with dreams, visions of heaven, encounter, and so on and so forth. But where many people miss it is they do not sustain the intelligence to observe the transitions. Listen, prayer groups, listen, ministries, listen. This is where we miss it. Because many times we think just because God is the object of the pursuit, when he now tells you, start learning my ways, sometimes you can say, Lord, I don't need it because of the excellency of his presence and he understands. That's why how you are mentored matters. There is a pattern of growth. This is what is happening to some of us right now. You got born again since 95. And the only thing in your life now is that you know God. Right now, you are not even sure you know God again. Why? Because you suddenly discovered that while you were serving God, when you started, somebody was giving you a harvest, whether you sowed a seed or not. And now you've been left alone. The reality of being the breadwinner of your family will not even allow you to spend time with God. And Satan likes it so. That's why you hear people say, I used to be on fire before I got married. And this foolish husband or this stupid wife that I've married is the reason why I no longer can love God. No. You used to spend time worshipping God, but now you have to dedicate 10 years of your life giving birth to children. 10 years is not 2 days. 10 years taking care of the children. You just sense that presence you used to send when you were in secondary school. And here's your baby crying too with the presence. And God says, attend to the baby. Oh Lord, but that sweet face. Mm -mm. Attend to the baby. If you attend fast, you will have time with me. But if you, if you pay the price and leave that baby, he will force you to leave me tomorrow. Listen to me. It is not error when God switches you to learn his ways. Hear me. Hear me, believers. It is not error when God just, he does not take himself out of your life, but he focuses you on his ways to say, learn this. You need it. You need it for your daily bread. You will encounter things that will bring delay in your life. So my son, buy a book on restoration. Add it to your spiritual archives. You will need it tomorrow. You will be attacked by the devil. You must learn the principles of warfare. And for four months, all you who all is just worship and God says, you will not even get a new song as a worshiper. Worshiper. Four months, no new song. And God is teaching you on warfare. And the devil can say, I hope you are not backsliding. God says, no, the songs will come when you give me time. But for now, is it not with money you will buy the keyboard? Learn what will help you set up the studio and you can lie down there alone without a landlord knocking your door. So Satan comes as an angel of light and says, have you stopped seeking God to seek things and that guilt will turn you back and time is going. I am telling you that voice that looks spiritual is Satan masquerading as an angel of light using the regalia of religion to stop you from learning the ways of God. Many of us would have been better spiritually now but because sincerely so, you wanted to seek God but you just, I, I, this business seminar and business seminar or prayer retreat, choose one is a prayer retreat. The Holy Spirit said go there for the business. But Lord I'm used to spending time at the back of my, my house. Is this not backsliding? And he says no, I'm the one guiding you. And sometimes religion will draw you away. And then when those who were in that business session are now rolling on the floor, you will be around trying to look for who to help you. And your wife looks at you and says, what kind of God did you serve? 
That's the question many people are asking in our families. You were a reverend for 30 years. How did God work with you that your life is such a failure? And the result is to blame God. This is what we say. Lord, you failed me. Lord, you failed me. I spent 20 years giving my life for you. 20 years. So you begin to love God and worship God every day. And then sooner or later, all those visions of the presence begin to diminish. And then God begins to say, sweetheart, it's time for you to start learning how to be a wife and a mother. Lord, let, let carnal things not distract me. I need your presence. God says, yes, he's a gentle spirit. But don't forget that you are going to get married. Learn the principles. And you say, no, 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 no. I don't need to. Your presence will give me everything. You say, yes, it's my presence that is now recommending my ways to learn. And that person will be a worshiper and a prayer warrior for many years until marriage comes. Then she gets married and the man returns by 6 o'clock. Sweetheart, where are you? And there's a song playing in the other room. And then the man says, what are you doing? Say, his presence. That's, that's, all, that's all I desire. So why did you marry me? Listen carefully. And then you now say, this man is a devil. He's out to destroy my life. And Satan says, thank you for giving me a jackpot in this family. He will wreck that family to pieces. The ways of God are his wisdom to guide you so that you can settle the things that pertain unto life. And then you can focus on him. I thank God for giving me this understanding. I am obsessed with balance. I've taught you again and again. Imbalance is as destructive as error and ignorance. This ministry by the grace of God. We are where we are by the privilege of God's grace. Because of the understanding to navigate these seasons. I will never forget. Uh, Ejimisian, he will testify. You know because of the way god started those days with me and you know you know all those that were there a time came when god started teaching me these things even me myself i felt guilty because all i wanted was his presence i would go in the night browsing jewish worship and the mystery of god's presence enter in a cafe with my fluffy disc if I see anything that looks like Shekinah on an ark, I'm downloading it. I don't even want to know whether he's talking about, just download it. And then a time came when in a very strange way, the passion began to diminish. I fasted my life and I said, Lord, what am I doing wrong that I'm not getting this? And the Spirit of God told me, it's now time to learn the ways of God. I remember when I started proposing some of these things. Around those times, you know, I remember I suffered my own share of persecution. A lot of people just began to propose, this guy has backslidden. He didn't start like this. I, I'm Noel, they didn't call me apostle then. I mean, somebody who will pray for hours now is sitting down. You are talking about finances. You are talking about leadership. These things are a sign of backsliding because if you are really, you should be fresh. I agree. And time. There are many people who were born again before that are not even born again. again. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. It's not the enemies that fight them. Hunger. Listen very carefully. If I ask all of you right now, and I say those who are really trusting God for a job, if you know that joblessness is pinching you and paining you and you are angry about what is doing to your spiritual life if i ask you to stand up you'll be you will see those who they will stand up with the attitude you will know they are really angry say lord I, 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 i've been serving you what is all this one that means something there is affecting your concentration and i have a responsibility to show you the ways of god 
and to show you fast so that by the grace of God we can spend time and spend our lives mentoring a generation on how to live listen to me there are many things I've said that people have thought was pride some of them are now manifesting today Micah chapter 4 is the prophecy for our generation and that's one of the things that God is doing with this ministry Micah chapter 4 and verse 1 please give it to us thank you thank you Micah chapter 4 please but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountain and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it verse 2 and many nations how many nations here don't just talk of countries they talk of systems shall come and say come no invitation no invitation come let us go up to where the mountain of the lord to where the house of the god of jacob that means the place of encounter but we are not going there just for encounter we are going there to carry over a course we ignored and he will teach us of his ways the God of encounters we encountered him but we ignored his ways but now we see a mountain that has both encounter and his ways it says come he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem a day will come when the pride of men will fail them a day will come when the imbalance of men will haunt them a day will come when the inaccurate spiritual pathway that people are taking will show and God is building an ark and telling you a flood is coming when Jesus called the disciples look at how he trained them he called the disciples and started by doing a little introduction of himself then he stopped and started teaching them his ways let's go up the mountain and he teaches them the beatitudes the ways of the kingdom he taught them his ways so much that one day he said who am i who do men say that i am they say thank you because this thing has bothered us too we have learned how to be the light and soul but who are you John was so distracted he forgot who he was. He didn't know that when you learn his ways, you go back to him. And he was offended. He said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah? Or should we seek another? Do you not see that at the end of men's life, when Paul finished knowing his ways and did his exploits, he returned back that I may know him. It's a, it's a principle. Paul did everything. I, I've, I've learned them. He was in the wilderness of Arabia for 18 years. Learned the ways of God. When he was ready, he said, let's go. They killed him. He took himself back to life. And got up and finished everything. And at the end, he said, look, this is it. But Lord, that I may know your ways. Moses was at the backside of the mountain. The progression, an encounter. When he encountered him, God said, take your attention from me. Let's go to your rod now. This is about the one that's you. And Lord, I'm looking at you. Forget about the burning bush. You have seen me. But let me show you what you will do with this rod. And the attention went from the bush to the rod. And he trained him on that rod. He said, now stand up. Leave me. Leave the bush and go somewhere. You will come back. I will meet you again. But for now, he would have stayed there and circled that bush and said, I would die on this bush. Oh, your face, oh Jesus. When Jesus appeared unto Saul of Tarsus, he gave him an encounter. Then he says, go to the house of Judah. Wait there. Someone will come and begin to guide you on the ways of the kingdom. Ananias came and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. His eyes were open and he started learning by revelation. And when he learned at the end of his life that I may know him. John the beloved started like the apostles knowing him. And then later he learned his ways. 
by the time we get to the end of John's life it was full of encounters this is the record that God has given us eternal life and he begins to talk about the divine life then in the Isle of Patmos I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw I have seen him again he told me you will see me again I will come to you again you need to know this about the progression of growth it's a powerful secret it starts with him and then when he starts with you a time comes he says now just knowing my face is not enough to solve the matters that relate to life therefore i will like like a a preliminary course that you will take in another department for a while if you go to that department and remain there you are supposed to take the course get the knowledge and return back i don't want to spend my life even doing ministry because ministry is not an end is a means to an end the end is him listen to me this will help you to know why week after week we continue to dispense the mysteries of the kingdom and every once in a while you will find out that we will have extreme moments where God's presence will come mightily and just interrupt the service and allow periods of extended worship just to remind us don't be distracted with the ways and then he will step back again let the teaching continue those who follow that path are beginning to see certain results in their lives you can have the luxury today to lock yourself and you and your children can serve the Lord as for me and my house he says we will serve the lord you will not serve the lord when you are hungry because a borrower is slave to the lender the rich will rule over the poor please listen to me many believers miss it at this point they start well with god and then when the holy spirit begins to tell them now it's time for us to move to begin to understand the ways of god they think sometimes it's an error no why should i buy a book on relationship i need books on his presence why should i buy a book on management why should i buy a book on church growth i need a book on heaven mine is just heaven and god says it's true but just calm down let me show you my ways lord i know you are going to call me and because of the encounter i'm having i will have a global ministry god says potentially that's true but that global ministry works on systems. Let me teach you something. Please just amplify. Can you change the sound? I just need something I can hear. Listen. Help us Holy Spirit. When Joseph came. Listen. Joseph was the deliverer of Israel. I hope you know how Joseph delivered Israel. He brought systems that preserved that economy. Is that true? Joseph left them with a prophecy. He said, when you are going out of Israel, carry my bones. He was not just saying, carry my dead bones. The systems that kept you here, carry it along. Don't leave it behind. Bone struck of systems and structure. There was something that happened that gave this thing structure over my leadership. I know God is calling you to go to a land thrown with milk and honey as his own people. But on the way, you will need the knowledge of this. Carry my bones. Carry it. Why, why will you dig a man? It's not because the land was cursed. No. Carry my bones. Carry those structures and those systems. So while you are serving God and you see a book on financial intelligence, don't throw it, just keep it. A time will come as you are transiting. Let it be part of your library. For now, you are focusing on God. And God, you want to study a book on marriage and God said, no, 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 no. Let's continue the seven days dry fast. It will not always be seven days dry fast. All the movement of heat and cold in your body, it won't happen like that forever. It's a system. You are in a season where he's exposing you to himself. So all your prayer is full of visions. My hands are shaking. My legs have cold and heat. Carry the bones. You will need it.
a day will come when the shaking will no longer be there a day will come when you will not be falling around the way you used to fall before again a day will come when for a strange reason the strength for 10 hours in prayer will not be there and you will search your heart and it's not backsliding remember that god must be the governor and the coordinator of your growth not religion you allow men they will delve you into error sincerely so i watch with shock and i watch with pain in my heart the way so many young people especially in africa continue to corrupt this part of growth they leave joseph's bones and when they get to the wilderness they do not know how to call for bread again are we together this ministry by the grace of god runs on systems and structures and it has afforded the opportunity to serve God and serve his purposes I can imagine the level of distraction that would come into my life if all I focused on was just his face and I ignored his ways let me tell you what we would have done by now I would have carried an offering basket and walk around and say I'm hungry I love God have you been blessed by my anointing yes Pastor Alpha, you all of you people here, it's one one million. I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's not as the spirit leads. It's not that I'm bad. This is how we carry over in life. A day will come when your wife will tell you, what kind of a man of God are you? And you will get angry. And all of a sudden, you will start choosing where to go and minister. There's one powerful campus minister. Campus, how much are the students going to give me? Campus minister to many zealous but broke students. And the Spirit of God is saying, I want to birth a revival on that campus. But you look at your pocket and it says there is another ministration. It's, it's happening in the U.S. And I mean, the, the, the priority service from Nigeria to U.S. alone is enough to bless you. There's no hearing God again. And all of a sudden you leave those poor people and a revival is destroyed because a man did not understand the ways of God. Imagine that I went to honor ministrations today because of the honorarium they give. It's a terrible thing. You don't have, to, you will be angry. What of the ones that cannot give you anything? But you know it was the will of God. After you finish preaching, you see what they give you. I say, how much is this? Say it by yourself how much say sorry sir you see we were able to raise it you, you see it and that bitterness will choke the anointing out of your life i'm not just talking the area of finances alone have you not seen preachers that resign from ministry because they could not be able to raise their children well sometimes they ignore the children when God was saying, train up a child, they were hearing that word. They casted it. They were buying worship tapes. Bob Fitz, Don Moen. It's important. Don't get me wrong. And then, while they were in the presence, Satan was with the children. That's what happened to the American society. When God teaches people certain things, he said, teach your children. Write it. Your children will ask you questions. Make sure you teach them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This imbalance has punished a lot of us. I've seen men and women of God who organize meetings. And after the prayer and fast, members don't bring money. They only bring vision. Sir, I saw the meeting. is success. It is done. And he said, do you know how much the board that is? He said, it is done, sir. I'm telling you, I know what I saw. And he will pray with you and go back. And you stand there and say, God, did you call me or not? And God says, remember seven years ago when I told you to settle down and learn my ways. You criticize me, God, and you criticize everything. And because I respect your will, I said, all right, you continue. And now the deficiency of knowing that way of God is telling on you now. So you are anointed, you have encounters. But you cannot build a church that works 
because you know nothing about leadership you thought it was unnecessary until while you are preaching someone is fetching the money of the church and you think that god is that dull to have allowed it happen you're not knowing his ways then you find out that you never can be able to have up to 100 members what is wrong i'm anointed i just came back from heaven remember i said so what you will continue going to heaven and coming back and finding out that there is no growth because something about the system is not there so when jesus was born at age 12 he was in the temple learning learning and then at age 30 he comes to be empowered and begins to do ministry and then he returns back to god from where he came it is god his ways god listen god his ways his ways does not mean you will leave him it doesn't mean you will not pray and you will not fast no but God, because you are governed with time, you cannot do everything at the pace you started and have the time to... It takes time to learn. You may pray 10 hours every day and instruction from God for five months. But you do that that way, you will not have the time for other things. So you will find out that God has a system because even that did not happen by your strength. And so God helps you. Then you begin to learn. The Holy Spirit says, go to a catering school. Say, God forbid. With all these visions I'm seeing. Until you see that it destroys your life. Son, I need you to learn. I don't want you to, to be an inefficient person. You have to learn the laws of greatness. And you say, Lord, I'm going to the nations. You are not going alone. There are people there. And not all of them are born again. So he needs to teach you how to be a sheep among wolves. Lord, I don't care. All I know is that I'm going to be great. Apostle has said it. We will all be great. And we all know ourselves. Yes. Yes. It's true. But you must know his ways. So here you are as a born again person. And then you have the opportunity to meet a man. A captain of industry. And you do not know the principles of relationship. You don't know the principles of friendship. You don't know how to translate the reality of God's life to relate to a context. And you stand there. This is an opportunity to not just win a man, but win an industry to Christ. You know him, but you're not knowing his ways. I love Jesus. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. He would have said, wonderful. Nicodemus said, verily, verily. I mean, Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. So on and so forth. And when he led that Nicodemus, do you know that Nicodemus was a secret follower of Jesus? He learned his ways. He shall teach us his ways. Koinonia, hear me. You must understand the way God is training you. Sometimes you see us sit down and for over one or two months, all the emphasis is on finance and the rest. And sometimes I can almost discern that when these teachings are coming, here's the spirit of religion again. Two months teaching on money. is money everything. We, we need the presence of God. I see the joy on some of your faces as soon as I stand and I say, the Lord is showing me something. And someone is shouting, you know, people that this is koinonia. Now these are koinonia, not this backsliding version. And you keep allowing the spirit of religion. You see, a student does not define the curriculum. No, your job is to sit in the class with your heart open. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Listen, you will thank me for what you are learning. Because you will pastor a people who are balanced. After service, they have cars to go back home. They have houses that they can serve the Lord in. They have influence enough to bless the Lord. 
yet in the midst of it they will roll from pillar to post do not allow the spirit of religion destroy your peace do not allow the spirit of religion to corrupt you do not even allow the biases and the imbalances that we carry as men of God to corrupt the accuracy of your pursuit there is only one architect who designs this pathway Jesus himself the author the finisher a lot of people see what God is doing in and through my life around the body of Christ a man of God asked me and say apostle you're a very strange man there are different churches that you can go to and minister how do they accept you is it that they don't listen to your message in other churches for instance maybe a very conservative church i can finish a conference there right now and the very next meeting may not be as conservative as is it that they don't know it's not usual for people to receive guests like that and i tell them there is something he taught me about the body it's a mystery your results show what you know or you don't know when the body receives you there is a grace there is knowledge that has come this is what i'm teaching you so you don't become a christian that will because of your imbalance as a man of god you join the campaign of fighting every other person too who are you for paul or apollos are you seeing that now and many of us have been raised that way sadly oh i am not this man of god this one in this country is my papa this one is my this this one in my and you join the campaign of fight whereas there is something you can know and the gates of the body as an entity can be open for you is god blessing you this is what you are learning my brothers and my sisters you are learning principles principles i bless the lord for granting me the grace to be the one teaching you this because see if i didn't walk in the anointing it usually will mean that i'm trivializing those things because they are not captured in my life that's why it's powerful to be balanced because your teaching will be believed you have a system of defense for every dimension hallelujah tomorrow i'm in mina sunday i'm in mina monday i'm in abuja tuesday i'm in eboy wednesday i'm in eboy i'm coming back on thursday imagine let's be honest in the name of honesty imagine if i had only two clothes and ten thousand naira for chisco transport do you I, 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 please i'm not i'm not I'm, is this not i just want you to think sincerely do you know how i will be forced to manipulate those people i will carry the anger of my pain and say something god did not say and preach something god did not preach not because i am bad And then here is the risk all through the road in the night 12 hours you preach back to back 12 hours you are back and then everything starts again it's not a blessing I can tell you it's not a blessing you will never be able to have time to seek the Lord imagine that you want to have a Bible study and commit yourself and someone is quarreling and they are raising their voices and distracting you you are in a vision you don't even go far you are back because the noise koinonia let me tell you what god is making out of your life you will love what you are becoming you may not love the training now but my brothers and my sisters listen to me god's integrity is back of what is happening to you and a day will come people will look at you and say sir why are you such a man of God what what's responsible for the balance and and the depth of efficiency and you will tell them let the wise man not glory in his wisdom 
let the strong man not glory in his strength and let the rich man not glory in his riches but let him that glory a glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me my journey starts with god but i'm careful enough to observe the things that he's teaching me that will be responsible for my results and it will recycle time back to help me serve the lord there are times that i prepare an average of 18 to 20 sermons per week 18 to 20 sermons per week aside from specialized sessions and counseling sessions you ignore this that i'm teaching you a day will come you will not have messages again as a man of god and you say it does not matter and then members will leave and you will call it an attack because you do not know the ways of god they know not neither will they understand psalm 82 and verse 5 they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course he said but have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes like you to pray you won't believe that i've not even started my sermon for this night i, I, I didn't even realize that the time had gone but i like you to passionately cry think of your children while you are crying think of those called to your destiny while you are don't be selfish it's about you but not all about you cry to the lord Lord, I thank you for revealing a dimension of yourself. But now that you are teaching me your ways, give me the grace to stay. Give me the grace to stay. Lord, I thought the time that I've been spending in the last two years studying, I've even been afraid. Why are the visions not coming like before again? Now I'm learning that it's a season and a phase. It's not necessarily proof of backsliding. I have come to a point where you are working on me. You are giving me intelligence to be effective. Please pray. I want to inspire a generation to reflect you correctly. Hmm. Abarada kata pros kade balash. He brande gede la kato sada brahas kadabai. My children should not suffer while I seek you. My family should not suffer while I seek your face. It takes time to know you. Oh God, awaken me from slumber so that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. So that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. I don't want to spend my life chasing after mundane things. Chasing after money. Chasing after power. That at the end of your life, when you should be seeking him, you are now learning his ways. They that seek me early, early, they that seek me early shall find me.
Aleluia. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. They are not information to those who find them. They are information to those who hear them. But they are life to those who find them. The kingdom of God is like a pearl that is missing. And someone lights a candle and begins to sweep that room. And when he finds it, the kingdom of God is like a treasure that a man finds gold in a property and goes to sell all he has to buy it. There are ways to redeem the time. Listen, let me tell you. Look at me. In the 60s and the 70s, nobody, people took jobs for granted right from 500 level or 400 level. You could come with jobs nobody knew that today will be an information age a digital age that will replace jobs so people had the luxury to not focus on some things but times have changed and the sons of Issachar it, it, there is a generation of Issachar that had the understandings the the fact that God is not doing a thing the way he did 30 years ago does not mean he's the one he's not the one doing it listen let me teach you this for every dispensation there is a strategy when samson listen when samson saw the philistines the spirit of the lord came upon him and he took the jawbone of an ass a donkey and he killed all of them when he killed the philistines he looked at the bone and threw it why do you throw what works i just used a strategy and defeated an army and yet i'm leaving it to wait for another one many of us will hold that bone and idolize it and even when the bone has no life again you will keep moving with it one time he will tell you let the people go through the water other times he will tell you stand still there is always a strategy for every generation don't borrow a strategy that is not applicable Joshua had to wait. What is the strategy to bring down Jericho? And he said, this one is not about warfare. Let the priests lead the way. This is the strategy. There are times that the men of war would lead the way. There were times it was not just the priest, the worshippers. What is the strategy for this generation? Do you know? Or do you believe it's the same strategy for everyone? It's a joke. God, who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the fathers, hath in these last days, in these last days, spoken to us through his son, whom he has appointed to be heir over all things. So there was a time in sundry times and diverse manners, he used a strategy, but in these last days, there is a strategy. Just because a strategy worked, does not mean God is interested in using it again. Give us this day. Not give us once and forever. Give us this day. For every day there will be a strategy. Oh Elijah, for a while it will be at Brook Cherith. That's the strategy for your survival. Position yourself at Brook Cherith and a raven will come. But the, the, the brook is dried up. Elijah, hear the word for another strategy. Otherwise you would die at Brook Cherith. Whereas God has relocated your blessing through another strategy. You held the jawbone of an ass. It killed in 1960. It killed in 1970. But the arsenals of hell changed their strategy. And we refused to go back. Because we learned the principles very slowly. And we ignored the presence. Many people are applying principles that do not have a corresponding power in the realm of the spirit. That is why the results do not show. I remember the time, and I say this respectfully so, when God told me I want to open your eyes to see the key to church growth. I had not seen it. I am, look, let me tell you something. I have studied the largest churches in every continent with all humility. The day I saw it, I said, this is it. Not the church growth of the fathers, the church growth of the future. 
the way they built the tabernacle in the wilderness was not the way they built solomon's temple the strategies are different the goal is that he inhabits them but the patterns are different listen to me if you get what i'm teaching you you will be blessed there are people generations past could ignore certain things but there are generations that if you ignore certain things in the 60s and 70s you could see a a trader keep banana or something and not even be there you will carry the banana put it in the leather and drop the money there but it says the times it says the days are evil are we together now yes you couldn't have somebody just come and cheat you and betray you and stab you for nothing because the pressure to make for that is not there but the hardship of men has helped them to invent wickedness didn't the bible tell you that the end times will be like the days of noah what characterized the days of noah wickedness multiplied and so you need the strategy you carry the naivety of decades past and you find out that you are on you are unfruitful to the church listen let me tell you this i will use names respectfully and honorably papa Ia deboye represents the face of a generation are we together now he represents god and a dimension of his walking to a generation if i go to papa ee adeboye's generation no matter I've, I've ministered many many times in those circles and no matter how powerful my ministration is the people love me but they may not listen to my messages because david served his generation are we together even if I cut promises head and carry it and put it back are we together now it will never stop anybody from crowding and camping around redemption camp I went for a conference recently and we had to route through another way because two major ministries were having a regular meeting and the entire road was blocked it was a strategy for that generation everyone that caught the strategy the results have to show there are others who passed and didn't get it it's very clear they didn't get it so we must stand like habakkuk i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower god what are you saying for my generation what is the strategy for survival what is the strategy for survival there were no facebook's to criticize a man of God those days but now oh God that is easy for darkness to attack a man what is the strategy hmm. are we together now yes people were a lot more loyal in the times of our parents and our time they can love a man no matter what is right or wrong but our generation is a vocal generation a lawyer can stand up and say you are stupid for thinking we are idiots he will listen to you and after service he will analyze your message and sue you to court because you abuse my privacy there were certain levels of um, being raw and outspoken that our fathers could afford in their generation you try it now you will die because you are speaking to nations they had the luxury to say certain things in certain ways you are not bending the truth you are receiving a strategy because you are speaking to people who are global in context and you must be able to translate divine realities to make meaning to a generation you can't talk to everybody as if you are talking to those who are in your locality when Jesus came and found an agrarian society, he converted the realities of the kingdom into agricultural terms to relate to the then civilization and they understood. Listen to me. Ministry is not just about the anointing. There is a skill. There is a science. There is a psychology for effective ministry. It's much more than just having the ability to do an exegesis of scripture. It's a combination of many factors playing behind the scene. People don't just love you because you are telling the truth. Mm -mm. It is not just truth itself that saves. It is how it is presented. 
you can serve me water please help me with this there are two ways to serve me water here is one way apostle please take water and drink you serve me water the water is not wrong but i will hate you because of your service you did not serve it to present honor you can do this to a footballer in the football field and he will not be angry is the ethic of it in fact the skill of receiving it will be an accolade but now when you come to me and you carry this and throw it the same thing you did in the field that they clap for you you do it here they will curse you you must understand the intelligence that comes with territory and systems oh dear this is not a pastor's conference please sit down in the name of jesus sit down sit down sit down sit down sit down the spirit of this prayer and fasting is upon me ah. second peter chapter one jesus you know sometimes when i come looking which one do i omit and which one just boils in my spirit and i'm looking which one do i omit and which one do i say because I truly, truly want you to get it. Many of you will have churches in the future. You will see how exceptional your churches will be. Yes, yes, yes. The grace that is upon you is, is too much for a member. No, God is training you. I mean, no, 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 no. This is not the grace that just keeps you. You are representing a nation and a territory. So you are listening for the sake of nations that might not be hearing now. Second Peter 1, help us, Holy Spirit. Hmm. Verse 2. Let me just tie up something and we'll pray this night. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 3. Read with me according as his divine power hath given unto us all things stop read it again and stop at things ready one to read one more time so let's reverse it all things are given unto us according or by his divine power listen carefully all things are delivered to the saints how faith is only a connector to his divine power the system that makes for reception in the kingdom is the agency of his divine power as powerful as faith is faith is like a funnel are we together the funnel connects the container and the one you want to put under so that's what faith does faith in itself does not produce miracles does not produce breakthrough are we together faith you know is just your conviction and the action you take to validate that conviction are we still together so the bible says according as his divine power let's work this a little tonight that means there are results if I see arrive your life the agency that made it so regardless of what principle you obeyed the principle only made way for his divine power if his divine power cannot be released there is no performance I don't know if you get what I'm saying yes let me give you an illustration look up please everyone what is inside this bottle water I, I hope you know that there are different ways to package water are we together now let me interpret this every time you are thirsty what quenches the thirst is water how it comes may be different are we together now yes it can be packaged in a bottle it can even be packaged in in you know all kinds of ways but if at all your thirst is quenched the factor that quenched it is water 
the bottle that brought it and the system of packaging is not the issue is that the central factor that quenches test is what water so the bible says thank you according as his divine power listen carefully his divine power does not give some things it gives what that means you need to study what the bible tells you gives all things according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness that means if i am not obtaining i am not engaging something that makes available his divine power listen 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 if i prosper his divine power hath given me prosperity there's a set of kingdom principles i engage but then when i engage them what will come is still his divine power in physics we teach that energy cannot be created nor destroyed i'm helping you prepare for jam tomorrow for those of you who are writing jam you'll be surprised to find out that that's your first question <laughs> are we together now but that it can be converted from one form to another are we, are we together on that? That means every time you see any manifestation of energy, it is the same energy. It is just different forms of it. That the same electricity can turn to power this and then can produce sound here. That means if I hear sound, energy made it so. If this fan is turning, energy made, I, 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 get, I get what I'm saying now. And so regardless of what results you are looking for, his divine power. The way you engage his divine power for different situations may differ. But that the factor that is responsible for giving the saints all things is his divine power. The more of his divine power that works in me, the more the possibility of obtaining all things become in my life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Follow me carefully. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Spiritual understanding. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Popular scripture. Look up, please, and let's read. It's projected. One, two, read. Stop. Who is the him? God. So who has the ability? God's ability is not in doubt. Now unto him who is able to do uh -huh, abundantly above all that we ask or think. Stop. He's about to introduce a condition that can make all what he just said to happen or not. And the condition is according to the power that walks not lives not dwells according to the power that walks not according to the power that lives in us mm. the possibilities are not according to the power that you possess it is the dimension of the power that is released the power that walks not the power that lives not the power that resides listen to me that's why we can have the same power we can have the same anointing and our possibilities are different because of the power that works, not the power that is in you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh, 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 the power that is engaged, the power that is produced in us. Are we together? We can have the same Holy Spirit. But the power that is released through sister A, brother A, may differ. Hence, they are actualizing the possibilities that God said would be. 
Many times I have found out the issue is really not more power. It is the grace and the understanding to activate the power that resides within you. They did not need to go and bring new bread and new fish. Something was done and that in itself was enough. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please understand this. It is according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power, not lives in us. If God spoke that way, it would be unfair. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? We have been made to drink of the same spirit. But the dimension to which we have released the power of God and the investments of the spirit within us differ. This is the difference. So my possibilities and your possibilities may differ. The factor is not God. The factor may not even sometimes be the anointing. It is, I have done something to make a greater room for the power to not just live, but to walk in and through me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So the power that we allow to find expression through us determines the possibilities that come. And there are many ways to make the power work in us. That's why we are spending these seven days to give room. I'll just tell you two quickly and we'll pray. One way that you can cause the power to be at work in you is through enlightenment and transformation. The power of God is limited to your belief system, your paradigm. I've taught you this according to the power that works that works that works i've given this example here some of our fathers great fathers of faith who lived in the 40s 50s and 60s many of them were heavily anointed but because some of them did not go to school some of them could not speak many languages are we together the limitation in their mindset did not allow the power of God invested in them to be fully manifest. Now, those fathers, as crude as they were, they now anointed other younger people with an enlightened mind, with intelligence, and you see the potential manifesting. Enlightenment and transformation is one way to activate the power that works within you. There are possibilities that will never find expression until they pass through an enlightened mind. We'll soon pray. Come, Sam. Please look up, everybody. Sam, in this example, is a mighty prophet of God with a great prophetic grace. But Sam is not so enlightened in this example. Are we together? So his understanding of the word is very, very small. Or there's nothing there. And then his general enlightenment in terms of knowledge, in terms of the knowledge about life is small. We both have the same anointing. You are going to see that the possibilities that flow forth from our lives will be very different in spite of the fact that the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together now? Let me give you an example. Two of you, please come stand. Let's assume that this gentleman and lady, uh, husband and wife, are we together? Now, the Lord is revealing to me, watch this now. Sam can come as a prophet. The divine power is at work in him. And Sam can see a horn on this girl's head. What did he see? And he can see fingers like that of a witch. This is what his vision is telling him. There is no enlightenment to properly translate what he's seeing to the edifying of the people. So he will announce it from the limitation of his mindset. His sight was correct, but the divine power is limited. And he, can, he will just say, Madam, you are a witch and you are a devil. Oga, you married a witch and you've been smiling. Why will your business move forward? And he can even recommend 
that the way forward is what? This guy has misrepresented what God can do. God can do better than that. But because he is anointed but not enlightened, there is so much power in him, but very little is working. Are you getting that now? The only power that is allowed to work is the power to see. The power to interpret is not allowed. Because enlightenment did not activate it. Now, this guy is still a prophet of God, but he will keep destroying marriages in his church, for instance. Are we together now? Now, stand again. I have the opportunity to now prophesy. And I'm not only anointed, I am enlightened. Meaning that I understand the systems and the ways of God. Are we together? The moment I see a horn on this precious lady, listen, I know that there is a difference between bewitching there is a difference between being a witch and there is a difference between being manipulated by darkness when i see this my understanding helps me to interpret it well and so i know that the problem is not this lady she may be connected to something territorial that god is trying to show me so i separate the influence from the person now more of god's power and possibilities can now flow by reason of my enlightenment and by so doing, I can set this lady free. Are we together now? And then I can redeem this family. Still yet, I can even be more enlightened. And after I deliver them, I know that there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted. It is preached. It's called deliverance through knowledge. It is not enough for this lady to be delivered from the spirit influences. I've taught you this she must be reoriented to understand the ways of God to know who she is in Christ to help her understand the principles that make for victory three approaches same anointing his divine power he's able to do this according the power lives in us but how much of it works in you that will determine your result so when your mind expands, more of the power of God can flow through you. Many times people come to me and they say, Apostle, more anointing. I say, what exactly are you looking for? Say result. I say, do you really believe that if I pray for you, they don't even listen. They say, yes, sir. Just, just do it. And I say, mm -hmm. how many people prayed for you? A, B, C, D. Did anything change? No. That means that you are like a tap that has refused to open. They connected you to a dam, but you have limited the water to come by drops. Are you seeing that now? So you are wondering why a bucket has not been full even after two weeks because the water is limited to the opening. If I can help you open the more, you can fill the same bucket. You don't have to change the reservoir. That expansion. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. That's why we need enlightenment. Just because we are spiritual does not mean we ignore enlightenment. You can see how, for instance, God saves this marriage. Otherwise, if this enlightenment is not there, and I don't interpret it well, this man will go, you, do you think, will you eat your wife's food if you hear that kind of blind prophecy with no interpretation? And then she brings all kinds of things. Fish, fish, mermaids with fish. Say, you now brought the one from the sea for me this night. You would have even brought cow or something. We continue to make a fool of God's power because the enlightenment that makes that power a blessing is the same thing like power coming from Nepa or Nitel. Are we together? And then you have a wire just caught and somebody just touches it. It was not channeled properly and so it is not controlled well. This is it. You can be a pastor heavily anointed, but because of the low level of your enlightenment, the power of God may not be able to flow. Did you know, let me tell you something. Many dimensions of the spirit of God that is at work in my life is at work in the life of many people, especially young ministers around, and people hate them because there is the same anointing. The interpretation and the system 
of dispensing that power has been refined through enlightenment so that i can let the power of god flow in a meeting and i can let it flow in a way and manner that relates to the thinking of that ministry hmm. there are people who are very intellectual and seeing the power of god flow like that may create a lot of controversy and so you need to come like paul from the standpoint of a scribe and a pharisee the anointing will have to follow the channel of knowledge you are going to have to con to convince them by the soundness of theology and scripture that becomes the host by which that power flows they are able to receive it because the depth of your balance and your theological exegesis will keep them in awe and they will know that whoever must have received this level of intelligence this power must be of god notice how paul made his defense from city to city when he met ignorant people he just said this idol is the god you are looking for when he met intelligent people he said no don't call i'm a pharisee i'm a pharisee i'm learned everybody say enlightenment it's very important you don't go to talk to a team of business experts and and entrepreneurs and great people around and you just stand and say don't worry just use your heart and right now as i'm speaking somebody is going to shout don't worry you will not understand you're unfruitful they will drive you out of that place you are anointed but you are short-circuiting the power because enlightenment has not allowed a greater dimension of the power to work in you are we together the second way you can allow this to happen is through prayer and fasting thank you prayer and fasting is a system that among other things principally deals with the issue of unbelief but it can expand your capacity in the spirit it is true it is true the disciples could not cast out a certain epileptic spirit and jesus told them this kind that means there are many kinds this kind go ahead not accept listen listen don't argue with jesus this kind go ahead not but by prayer and fasting there were certain people who bound themselves and said they would not eat until paul died prayer and fasting there are, there are spiritual strategies that can allow more of the power of god that is resident within you to be activated and to be at work in you when a man sets himself to pray and fast it's not just starvation my brothers and sisters hear me there is no man i know or woman of god that is being mightily used by god with genuine power genuine power genuine power that is not a student of fasting and prayer it's a joke There are certain spiritual loads you cannot carry until that stamina is there oh god give me give me and god says this thing will drop and crush you into pieces but when you get to the place of prayer and fasting it's like walking out you may not know the changes are happening to you but you just continue so while you are praying and you are fasting you are praying and you are fasting many things are happening and then you will see that there is grace you may not even know until the day you go for a meeting and they say brother can you come and share in this fellowship and you come as a brother your name is about to change you just stand and say can we all rise up to pray and you find out that people cannot stand up again what happened his divine power god is saying you have given me more space now see what that more space can do let me tell you this when i started out in ministry we're going to pray i noticed that certain sicknesses and diseases will never go i never got testimonies in those areas it bothered me for a while i said god what is this there are gifts of healing yes i studied all of them tl born and, and at a point in time i studied i studied you know classifications of sicknesses i studied all kinds of rabbinical writings 39 straps on jesus 40 less one i studied them and this thing was not working pregnant women were never getting pregnant if i prayed even me i knew they won't get pregnant yet i was anointed how can people be falling under the anointing and certain possibilities were not coming 
I said, Lord, what is the key? And then God called me and said, the anointing is there, but your capacity is small. I said, I know the key. Shakataskaba. Rakatoske bakatose degeta. You would think you are not doing anything. You just continue. You are expanding your capacity. A day will come, you will look at that woman. Whereas you would have prayed before as if you are fixing the tire of a car. Sweating around a pregnant woman to get her pregnant. If this thing is not there, it's not there. Jesus looks at the epileptic patient and rebukes a deaf and dumb spirit and it's done. So we can be singing praise and worship in this place. And this brother is sitting on a wheelchair. And I come. Man of God. Man of signs and wonders. Just because you saw one or two things in a crusade ground. You don't vet your capacity. Just say, in, in my name, they shall cast out devils. And you even have the effrontery to tell the man, you think you are get beautiful. Do you know how long these guys were coming at from the hour of prayer? Not, not from, from lunch. The hour of prayer and you would call the name of Jesus and say stand up and they're already clapping for you in advance and you lift the guy and he's shaking walk the guy say, I'm will I lie and he just says sit down quietly let me tell you what went wrong please believe me it is never the power of God it is that the level of grace and anointing that needs to flow to correct that thing, your capacity cannot carry it. Now, many men of God will not be humble enough to receive this thing. They will say, this guy doesn't have faith. It's a lie. It's a lie. I always take responsibility for miracles that don't happen. And then as I began to stay with God the more, I started seeing certain possibilities. Newer testimonies and cases. I remember one of the most frustrating one was this HIV thing. That thing would not go at all. And the people who always tell, test themselves and let me know. Sir, it's still there. Oh. Of course, will, will the people lie? And I got tired. I said, no, something, there has to be something wrong see let me tell you when you love God and love people you will not excuse lack of results they will draw you back to the secret place and I began to pray I began to pray I said Lord there has to be a way and the Lord let me know there are many factors but the anointing is there my son but the capacity is small you have eaten away some space huh yes the power is flowing and food just stands like a customs officer and the power cannot flow but by the time you trust god for grace to scatter the walls of gluttony and open up your capacity you will not even know that that case is represented in your meeting while there was a time I didn't just used to speak upon people and it will happen. This creative dimension of the prophetic, it was not there. It was not intentional. The results were not repeatable. Many men of God will not open up to you like this and share with you what I'm saying. Because everybody has his reputation. I would speak to someone. People would come and I cannot remember talking to them because I'm not, I didn't even expect it to happen. I just spoke at random. Maybe one minor case that was under your grace was quickly answered. But you get to a point where you can tell him, go, I know you will come back with a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, it is not the mouth, it's the spirit, it's the capacity. This is what demons see. When demons look at you, they don't see your head, your shoulders, your knees, or your toes. They see your spirit man. The largeness of your heart. You may look tiny physically, but boy, they see what is there. And you make one decree and you open up doors. I thank God for the grace to do that today. And I thank God for the levels that we continue to press. 
because in this school you never graduate you just move higher and higher the day you graduate you 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 plateau there and you go down when i have the privilege to pray with people i didn't like praying with people before i like praying alone with god but not praying with people because of the frustration the results were there but they were not many just like it's happening to some of you man of god can you pray for me say let's pray you finish praying no results no testimonies can you believe god that in these seven days that something will tear open in you huh? that there can be a capacity please help her a capacity a largeness of heart listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is the size that you carry in the spirit hmm, that determines your result i'm telling you this if i pour water on this cup it is only the size of this cup that can take if anything outside that it will just waste away so sometimes it's not more anointing it is oh god expand me expand me expand me i'm tired of this level of testimonies headache 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 here and then all oh, my teeth <clears throat> I, I need to shift nations i need to stand and look over a family and say it has it's, it has come to pass listen to me if you're a man of god here hear me we're going to pray make sure you keep vetting what you are doing don't keep going to people's homes and waking them in the night doing night vigil from 10 to 5 and then at the end of it two weeks later they tell you nothing has happened you say let's do it again please don't frustrate people if that grace is not there go and work on yourself there are some there are some ministry publicity you should not do until you are ready healing service healing 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 bring the sick and we mock ourselves 90 sick people come and only one person who is not even sure it's not there Abba. it's divine power this ministry you see my brothers and my sisters is sitting on a large there is capacity in the spirit that makes for this all the people you see come it's not just because they like a man it's more than that there is capacity there is capacity there is capacity there are certain regions you don't do certain kinds of ministries and go scot-free the devil will attack you and destroy that ministry I'm challenging many of you. You are anointed, but your capacity is small. Your results show it. Mm -mm. Your words don't have carry power. You, there's too much talk. Too much talk. Too much grammar. Too much talk. Too much grammar. Too much talk. We need to settle down. Get this thing for real. Get real spiritual power. I've already been setting myself during this prayer and fasting to say, Lord, there are, there are dimensions. There are dimensions. Look at the way you have kept your fellowship small because where you stopped is where the fellowship stopped. It can't grow more than you again. Look at where you kept your prayer group because you are small. You continue recycling mediocrity and clapping for yourself. Oh, you are MOG. You are this, whereas there are heights and virgin dimensions in the spirit you know let me tell you when i see men of god sometimes and i see our pride i stand and i wonder i said compared to what result? where is the result when there are still families crying where is the result how many times did you pray for people do you know when people drop prayer requests here more than once when i sit down and i hear people saying i dropped my prayer request january i dropped my prayer request february i dropped my it does something to me i'm not saying you should know i'm saying ah, did you have to drop it three times to be answered that if you come for koinonia once 
once. It's enough for your miracle. The rest should just be growth. Once. Not twice. The next time is you bringing someone else. Enlightenment is good. But many of us, our capacities are small. That's why you finish fasting. And as soon as you finish your prayer meeting, as you are lying down, the spirits come back again. The spirits are testifying something. Apostle, I prayed three days. As soon as I was lying down, the same spirit that used to oppress me came back. Let me tell you, there is a level of fire. My brothers and my sisters hear me. Let me tell you, even a madman does not enter fire by mistake. Jesus prayed all night. How long? How long, please? Not all day. I've told you about the mystery of the night. Capacity. It takes a long time. So that you don't fool yourself. You just look at someone and feel you are falling down. I'm falling down. You are the same. It's a joke. It's a big, it's a serious joke. There are people who can speak over nations. I prayed and cried for that grace. I said, Lord, how there are regions that I may not have the opportunity to come more than once. Why should the people die? Capacity. This is the problem. It's too small. Too small. You are praying. Too small. You are speaking. It's too small. Laying hands. Too small. And so God cannot honor you. That grace is too small. Listen, it's time to come up here. Throw away the little, little results. Eh? Uh, thank God for the small results. But my brothers and sisters, we need to delve into something deeper. Deeper. The grace to change climates and change territories. Not saying a lot of talk that we cannot defend. There are still ailing people. Is there no bam in Gilead? You are getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. Five over ten. Is that a pass? They invite you into a family. Serve you lunch as a man of God. Take care of you. Even sow a seed for you. And then they say pray for us. And you pray and nothing happens. The spirits just watch you and nod their head. And you prayed in Jesus' name. Hi. Somebody needs to be angry and say, no more, no more, no more. Is it not a season of extraordinary fruitfulness? No more, no more. No more. No more. Oh. I 
I love you, Jesus. Oh, in your presence. Oh. Hallelujah. Listen, let me teach you something about the mercy of God. Every time you want to access the spirit of revelation, ask the Lord to release it by his mercy. There is no known formula I know for receiving the spirit of revelation. It is by the mercy and the grace of God that the eyes of a man be open. In scripture, the eyes of a man was opened when he said, Thou son of David, have. He didn't say, Thou son of David, don't pass me by. He would have remained there crying till Jesus. That was the last time Jesus would pass Jericho. But I saw a relationship between the mercy of God and the spirit of revelation. Is Thou son of David, will I remain blind like this forever? Have. He never said, I want to walk. The walking is a subset of the mercy when illumination come. Oh, I want to see. I want, mm -mm. thou son of David, have mercy. It's a language God cannot pass by. No matter what you know to do at once, God hears mercy. He remembers the blood and he turns. What should I do for you? You didn't call me correctly. Oh. I hope you know. Yes, that's why I said mercy. I don't even know your name. I said son of David. Whether you are carpenter or Jesus. I added mercy to my confusion. Have mercy on me. That's how you can see someone. Who will be bragging around. I went to theological school. And teaching nonsense and jargons. And someone will sit down and say. Lord I came from the village. There was no light in our community. But Lord I know that I've been seeing myself in dreams. Ministering and raising the, the dead. And watches. Can you open my eyes by your mercy and the spirit of revelation comes. Boom. One scripture. He may not be able to quote everything. One scripture. And with that scripture you will do exploits. I like you to prepare your spirit. Because what I want to share with you tonight will bless you in no small way. People come to the house of God for many years, Jimmy, and you find out that they are not growing. How do you grow? There are two indices for growth. It's no confusion. Number one is the degree to which you are conforming experientially to the image of Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. If you are not understanding the precepts of the kingdom, you are not growing, sir. Whether they ordain you pastor, apostle, deacon, once you are not accessing the midst of the kingdom, you are not growing. It's as simple as that. Because that's how we reign in this kingdom. On the strength of mysteries. What do you know now that took away fear from you? The fear you had in January. What entered you that can give you confidence to look at it and say, no way, not again. If your fear of January is still your fear of today, you made the word of God unfruitful in your life. Someone entered this year wondering and right now the person is just laughing at the same situation as they say that no 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 that one that was that was last year's challenge you won't talk that nonsense with me again because you know what to do not bold face for nothing for Jesus himself knew what to do my assignment in this ministry is that by the privilege of God's election and grace I will continue to show you what to do the result you desire versus the mystery that connects it. That's my assignment. To continue to show you 
that the kingdom is a compendium of possibilities but accessing them are predicated upon your knowledge of the mystery allocated for that result not the mystery available the mystery that is allocated you want to be blessed anything in the bible will not bless you anyway you have to find the one that is allocated for you you don't put rice in a pot and when it boils you lift it up and see beans you will see food but not beans if it's beans you want to cook you better find out one where to get beans two how to cook it correct so anything in the kingdom is not what you are looking for there are people who are blessed financially but this sickness will kill you you go to the hospital and treat it to refuse to come brothers and sisters there is an allocation you have to find out there are pastors who are so anointed they can raise the dead but you they will never have up to 30 members there is a mystery that keeps men people are not stupid to just come and sit down sit outside endure all kinds of things no sir my assignment is that by the agency of the spirit that i communicate to you the mysteries when you gather them together like this it's like a chain that connects you and heaven when you move in life the moment a challenge comes you smile because you understand the key to address it fear and ignorance and pain is a revelation of your bankruptcy of the understanding of the mystery that is tied to a result you are looking for there are things i used to fear years ago i don't fear them again i didn't cast out the spirit of fear understanding took me out of that realm you see that yes so please i want us to focus when you see us cry for the spirit of understanding this thing is not just even this anointing because you see many people especially ministers this is what we are all looking for anointing anointing is not just a generic oil that comes on your head this anointing you see has dynamics it doesn't just work anyhow how many people are you going to lay hands on on your life won't it kill you there is a system There are many means of transportation. There is bicycle. There is jet. If you want to arrive Lagos with a bicycle, you may die before you arrive there. That's how the dispensing of the anointing is. You will meet people. There are Knowing the vehicle is not just enough. You must understand the system of helping it reach people. There's somebody seated outside. Another overflow. There's somebody online in another nation. How do you, if all you know is just to lay hands on people, how do you bless those who are far? Please pray before I start teaching in one minute and say, Lord, change my level. Insist, please pray. Change my level. Paul said, I went up by revelation. Show me something. Lord, where I am is a revelation of my limited knowledge. I take responsibility and I admit, open my eyes. Satan can't be that powerful. There's something I am not seeing. Lord, I've been falling under the anointing, but that anointing has not healed one sick body. There is something I'm not getting. I have been sowing seeds, but a harvest has not been coming. What is blocking it? What more do I need to know? hallelujah please sit down <laughs> mm. the bible says when you read ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened paul is teaching here and then he says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them Ignorance alienates a man from the life of God. The experience of that Zoe life. Are we together now? That their understanding is darkened. That's the issue. Then it says that as a result of that darkened understanding, they are being alienated from the experience of the kingdom. 
so they may have semblance of what should be but never enter into the experience of it most people are not in ignorance of what their life should be they know what they should become but the power to make it happen that is a derivative of light you know you should be more anointed than now you know you should be more prosperous but what is the limitation it says having their understanding darkened and then alienated from the life of god on the strength of the ignorance that is in them I came angry in my spirit. Oh. We'll, be, we'll pray. I trust God for grace. So that we'll finish fast and just have some few minutes to pray. 1 Peter 5.10 Just one scripture. There is a level of rest. I began to perceive in my spirit that many of us were ordained by God to enter this year. That we have not entered. And my assignment is to insist that these two months left, we must force something to happen. The Bible says, but the God of all grace, listen, who had called us into eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered, the word suffered there is endured, endured with certain things a while, what will he do? make you perfect uh-huh establish you uh-huh strengthen you uh-huh settle you give you stability these four things must happen to someone's life between this november and december listen i really want you to believe me because believers are the ones who are possessors are we together it says after you have and you have put up with certain things for a while Put up with poverty for a while. Put up with pain for a while. Put up with disappointment. Listen, it can't be forever. No, sir. A book has many pages. When you stay on one page forever, it's a curse. After you have suffered a while. The Bible says weeping and just for a night. If you cry to the next morning, cry in the afternoon cry till another night that crying has violated god's ordinances he allows people to only weep in the night after you have suffered for a while make you perfect establish you establish you then he says strengthen you all kinds of might financial might intellectual might then he says set to you said to you you are unmovable you have gotten to a level where you are not afraid uh -uh. the lord declared that this is a year of triumph i believe this so when god gave me this scripture it entered my spirit and the lord began to communicate to me and say son you have not hit my expectation for the year this triumph there is there is something there is there is a dimension of testimony that is not yet rampant here and there like rain people are getting it but it is in a ministry of thousands of people if only four people testify as the man of god not failed four over thousands is zero round it up is zero so there is a dimension the services that remain for this year will be very strangely prophetic services i tell you there are services meant at pushing people to force the reality of this world because brothers and sisters God cannot lie God cannot lie God cannot lie God cannot lie so the Lord showed me this scripture and it really really blessed me tonight I'm going to teach very briefly on the mystery of divine intervention the mystery of divine intervention what is the spiritual secret behind calling God in the time of trouble and let him show up and bail you out what is the system in the kingdom that has been built where men when you need the help of God when your life is faced with an emergency and you need to call heaven brothers and sisters there are emergencies in our lives that require access to this system the mystery 
of divine intervention. The Bible is full of near, near shame experiences where God got up, showed up for individuals, showed up for the nation of Israel. God turned the lives of people around overnight. Let me show you one scripture you will want to know. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Learn this scripture, add it to your spiritual arsenals. You will need it, I guarantee you. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I want us to run uh, tonight. Read it with me, please. One, two, read. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly from temptation or oppression or calamities and to reserve the unjust unto the day. The Lord knows how to exchange experiences that he looks as child and says for my name say come promise that he looks at this person who calls upon his name and watches that this guy is getting into trouble he says god knows how to exchange people and carry this person out and drop the wicked for the punishment that is allocated for the righteous is called intervention there is a system in god listen please there is a system in God where God can plug men out of the fire. Remember the story of the three Hebrew boys. The Bible says they found the furnace seven times. That those who threw them inside the furnace. Listen. They threw them inside the furnace and the heat killed them. And when four of them were inside. The king was not a believer but the king had had strange encounters and he saw a face in that fire he had seen in his dream he said i i look and i see four people and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of god and the bible says they came out they could not even smell fire what of daniel that was thrown in the den of the lions because of his prayer life the bible says the lions were at peace with him and when he came out and they threw those other fellows, the lions just devoured them. Brothers and sisters, there is a mystery. There is a hidden code of operation allocated to the saints in light to help them deliver them out of all the troubles and the vicissitudes that Satan puts. Because you see, your destiny is a function of many things. And sadly, it includes the lives of others. And that also includes their carelessness. There are times you will get into things you necessarily did not cause. But you will suffer the consequence if you don't know how to exempt yourself. This is like an extension of the mystery of exemption. The mystery of divine intervention. Where men called upon God and God showed up and turned the lives of nations around. Turned the lives of individuals around. There is a way you call upon God for your personal prayer life. But brothers and sisters, there is a way you call upon God to intervene on a matter. That if he does not intervene, sometimes it may be that you are finished. There was a time death was killing people in Israel. Killing people. There was a way they called on God. Divine intervention is real. All through scripture we see that God is able to arise. Psalms 102 verse 13. It says thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time in god's calendar there is a time oh there is a time to favor joshua selman there is a time to lift me and you see the bible says in amos chapter 3 verse 9 that god does not do anything but to reveal his secret to his servants the prophets so when god is about to do something in a territory he captures his thoughts in words in in similitudes in in all kinds of expressions communicates it to his servants to deliver to the people so that their faith will be connected to what he wants to do in the season and god has declared that it's a season of triumph I believe God it's not just a cliche that a man of God comes to move ministry forward no sir thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time the time to favor her the time to lift her the time to honor her for God's sake the time to wipe her tears the time for Zion to say I am also the bride of a good man he says the time has come 
Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Many people want intervention. Intervention is the supernatural is a supernatural visitation over a man's situation that brings a radical transformation. Supernatural visitation of God. Supernatural visitation of God. All of a sudden, God steps in overnight and changes a man's situation overnight. He says, have you heard this proverb that a city was born in one day? He said, but as soon as Zion travails, in one day she shall put forth a son. Why do we need divine intervention? Because of our imperfection as human beings. The first reason that necessitates divine intervention is that we are inaccurate as human beings. Our inaccuracy as human beings, inaccuracy of understanding and obeying the precepts of God will necessitate God to create that provision. Are we together? If a young man drinks and smokes and gets to a point where he now repents, when his liver is quarter to die, he has repented, but the liver is still going to kill him. That gentleman doesn't just need a healing, he needs a divine intervention. When somebody repents in the prison and is supposed to say 80 years and he went there at 40, you see that he's going to die in the prison? He needs divine intervention. He's born again, but he's in the prison. Our families are in desperate need for divine intervention. Is that true? Hmm. Father not working, mother not working, 13 children, 10 of them not working. All of them graduates. Haba. There is need for a strange intervention. How about human agents that will sit on your destiny and vow and say for as long as we are here, we fraternize with darkness to jeopardize your confidence about God. I wish there was no such reality. But brothers and sisters, the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the wickedness that lies in our world. I was talking with a young man on phone who sent me a text. I think they worship one kind of idol and the father has been calling him. I should come back. There's something he's supposed to do. The guy said he's not coming back. After graduating from school, they're asking you to come. They will bath you, put something on your head like a cap and one kind of ritual like this. After that, they'll say you can go. The guy said he's not coming. And the man told him that that thing, whatever it is, will pursue him and look for him with his blood father the boy was speaking to me and i said let me tell you my brother if you go there and carry yourself and go and sit down under that whatever it is and they bath you with the blood of an animal and do those rituals uh -uh, god is able rather than wasting your time paying transport use the money and buy a book that reveals a mystery that you you keep the enemy at bay because what that shrine is trying to prevent him from will look for him if he doesn't have the mystery allocated he can make bold face and say i won't go but you will soon find out that it will happen to him first child dull second child very dull third child very dull and the person says, i'm brilliant my wife is brilliant and he sees that thing in a dream he say i i told you 10 years ago you would have rescued your children see don't reject darkness without having the light component. Don't just say, I reject darkness. Eh, every shine in my village, God forbid. It's a joke. You must have the light component. Otherwise, I tell you to haunt you and tear you into pieces. There are forces of darkness. We need divine intervention because of our inaccuracy. We need the intervention because, listen, the pace at which darkness attempts to destroy us versus our level of spiritual growth will require divine intervention at some point. Now, look at me. Listen, let me tell you something. In the next 10 years, 
there are things that I will know then that I don't know now. But Satan is plotting all kinds of schemes over my life based on the knowledge I need to know 10 years to come. I need intervention by the mercy of God to give me victory before I enter that level of understanding. If my victory is purely left to my level of understanding alone, it means that I will be punished on many grounds before I come into that knowledge. You need divine intervention. Is God speaking to someone here? Let me tell you this. I am very outspoken about results. I'm not a man of God that will lie to you and say results don't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If results don't matter, why do you go to work? Why do you wait for salary at the end of the month? Is that true? Results matter to God, matter to the devil, matter to everybody on earth. Whether we agree or not. Results are consolations to your Christian experience. Whilst it is true that we do not serve God just for results. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Even Jesus saw a fig tree that was receiving nourishment from the principle he programmed in the earth. And was not yielding the result. He caused it in annoyance. So God wants us to bear fruit. But there are keys that we must understand. Please look up. There are many of us here. And there are many of our family members here. Had they known that there is a mystery that controls divine intervention, many tragedies we now weep over would not have happened. Listen carefully. Are we together now? Yes. Somebody looked at you and vowed and said, Pastor Alpha, I will destroy you. We said, no problem, you wouldn't destroy me, but you did not understand the component, the revelation component, and eventually it caught up with you. I prayed for a lady. She probably may be following now online. Married, loved her husband. All of a sudden, the husband just changed and became a, a very, very funny man. Doesn't even stay in the same room with her and all of that. And she, she could not take it again and she called me. You know, I prayed with that lady and just this morning she sent me a text. She said she woke up in the morning and just saw her husband sitting by her bed something brought him listen listen this is what I, you see men are slaves to the mysteries that control them you can program things like a bomb in the spirit and just go and watch it the same way i can put a bomb and i program blow by eight o'clock and then i just move somewhere and i'm laughing at everybody around here because it must blow except another agency superimposes it this is how you can program results in the realm of the spirit and watch like a movie as they unfold in the earth realm using things you call circumstances coincidences but you know that they are intentional results that were programmed by mysteries this is how i want your life to be that you can sit down and program growth program speed program breakthrough and watch everything like a movie and day after day you watch someone get up and say, sorry, Elijah, I, I, I hope this is a new keyboard I bought for you. And you laugh. Something was programmed. Your house that has been 10 years refused to be completed. You program something by understanding. And someone comes to say, ah, Sam, I don't know. Do you mind me complete this house? And you will say yes because it was intentionally done. You don't say, I'm surprised you are coming. I'm not surprised. You were called. Are we together? That's why when people die in the villages, the Habalis don't cry. Have you ever seen them crying? No. Something they programmed. They programmed somebody from London and tell him where to come and die. When he dies, other people are crying and the guy says, well, it's just to let you know that we are not children. You can program things. From the foundations of the earth, some things were programmed. And the intelligence of the father, he watched everything unfold through redemption. No power could stop it. 
Satan tried. He entered. He went when Jesus was fasting. Now came and entered Peter. Now came and entered. When he entered Judas, I'm sure Satan thought he was smart. Paul was watching it like a movie and saying, yeah, yeah, had they known this? So this was the caricature that God was making out of Satan. He thought he was smart, but he was, God was using him as a slave. Because you see, when you kill a man, according to scripture, his blood will haunt you. So God made sure it was Satan that killed Jesus. Go and read your Bible. Blood is a mystery. It remains on the head of the killer forever. Paul was watching this. Whether he was in a hole, in a cave, in prison, I don't know. But Paul was saying, ah, ah. Satan, couldn't you see? Jesus casted you out of Peter and left you in Judas. You didn't ask why. You just continued until you became a fool. That's the reason why when we invoke the blood, something really happens. It happens to whoever was the killer. When Cain killed Abel, blood cried against him. Cried against him. <laughs> I need divine intervention. You need divine intervention. Samaria needed divine intervention. Please sit down. They got to a point, scripture says, come, that they got to a point where women can you imagine brothers and sisters that you get to a point where you are not just eating goats you are not just eating clothes women you have your child i'm telling you there is a strange grace this year for fruitfulness and miracles in this ministry we have seen very dramatic manifestations and and all of that there are mothers all around with their children moving right and center now imagine Pastor Alphas, that little baby. Imagine Annie holding this her child and saying, look, there is so much poverty. Pastor Alpha travels somewhere to go and look for food. And she liasses with a Jimmy's wife. Two of them, they carry Jael and carry David. And two of them stand and agree. And they say, we are eating Jael this night. You eat it. What sort of hunger makes you eat a whole human being? Now watch this. Then the Bible says they ate the first one. Then the next day, it was the turn to eat the other one. And the mother said no. And the woman said no. You ate my child. Listen, while that confusion was happening, the king started passing. And they went. They said, king, you can't leave us like this. And when all of that happened, the king said, look for Elisha for me. Look for Elisha for me because he had that Elijah program farming. He said, I'm sure Elisha has a hand in this trouble. Go and look for this. This, this guy was mentored by the troublemaker of Israel. Go and look for Elisha. Watch this. While all of this suffering was happening, the Bible says Elisha and the sons of the prophet were, he didn't say they were hungry. When he saw the king coming, he said, this son of a murderer wants to now come and kill me. Oh yeah, you push, you stop him. And because of that, it's okay now. It's called my attention. Let me casually do something about what is killing a nation. By this time, Kabakoto Sakataya. By this time, tomorrow. By this time, tomorrow. Listen, it didn't tell you how it will happen. If you understand the superiority of the realm of the spirit, you will never ask how results manifest. You see, let me tell you something. When people argue and say, how did this thing happen? They are not wise. The raw materials that create the earth are resident within the realm of the spirit. He said, by this time tomorrow, by this time, I'm hurrying up. I would have given you scriptures, but I really want us to pray. That by this time tomorrow, they call, they, please help them. This will cause this and that. And then a foolish man, like many doubters that insult men of God, he said, what are you saying? I, I mean, I'm the minister of this and that. I read this and that. Even if the windows, AJ, he knew that much that heaven had a window. With what did they build the window? He never asked. If God will open the window, will these things be? And the prophet said me, you will see it all. But they will kill you in front of that breakthrough. The 
And look at how the miracle happened. The prophecy had been programmed in the spirit. Now it is up to the word. This is where the wisdom of God starts. He starts searching for scenarios in the earth that can bring what is in the spirit to manifest. Are you seeing how prophecy comes to pass? Watch this. Look at this. Let me teach you something. Watch this. Look at me and learn. If I prophesy to you, Emeka, and say by tomorrow, if it is really by the spirit, I say by tomorrow, money is coming to your account. I have placed that word in the spirit. Hold on. The word manifests by the wisdom of the spirit. Let me tell you what the wisdom of the spirit is. It will start searching the earth to look for the scenario on earth that is capable of bringing that word down. Then connect it to the individual. Listen. The wisdom of God will move to a rich man. If it's not open, it will move to somebody who God had instructed to. So if he will keep moving like that. That's how the anointing got to Mary to be the mother of Jesus. The Bible never said the name of the mother of Jesus will be Mary. The prophecy started searching for a virgin. When he found one and she said, I'm available, he brought her out. Listen. There are too many activities on earth that can mirror what is happening in the heavens. For God to be bankrupt in terms of manifestation. When God says I want to bless you. Ko is already speaking to millions of people to sow. It's just that he has not told them who to sow. The wisdom of God can just connect one of them. You see how prophecy works. I'm helping your faith. So that when God says I will do this. You now sit with your limited mind. And say I only know Uncle A and B. And I already know, hey, promise you will never see me. And God is saying, no, we are talking about the wisdom of the creator. Look at what happened. Four lepers, everybody say four lepers. Four lepers were sitting quietly and the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom, because the word of God must come to pass. The man of God had declared it and the, the anointing came on the lepers. They thought they were just tired. But they didn't know that at that point, they were under the influence of a man of God. And the word started programming that result. They say, why sit here till we die? Even that talk was by the spirit. They thought they were gisting. And they said, look, let's just get up and go to the camp of our enemies. And tell them, kill us, but let's eat first. The Bible says the moment they began to go, God changed their people. They began to hear the sounds of chariots. And all of, listen, were they not warriors? Is it not fight they fought to get those things? Couldn't they fight again? When God wants to bless you, he will move your enemy in a way that you will not even know how things happen. I know I should not graduate, but there is a mystery that can be programmed. A man is watching your result. 37 over 50 you need 50 something comes on him and he right and he does not even know listen listen people some people hear the testimony of some of our some of the people who wrote jam here that jam changes from 100 and something to two and you hear them talking nonsense talking stupid things and saying how can it happen and i said look, look at this foolishness how does a boil come out of your stomach where did the mass accumulate from that projected out did any part of your body reduce for it to come out did he ask where it came from then when it disappears you say where did it go to you see how we think son of man can these bones live again immediately oh not after 10 years not gradually can these bones live again he said god i've seen many miracles but i've not seen this type that a dry bone is not like a dead human being i believe in raising the dead but dry bones and he said okay i want to show you something that when i show up i compress time and make things happen and he said prophesy prophesy and things began to shift listen it is too late when mysteries have been programmed in the spirit. Take it from me. The moment a man programs something in the spirit, you better find a way of countering it in the spirit. Otherwise, it must manifest. <laughs> D 
this is what herbalists do they conjure things they conjure spirit and then they tell the person go it is done at the point they said go it is done you didn't feel anything oh go we shall be we put your husband in a bottle and you saw it go it is done the woman will go home and still see her arrogant husband come back and she'll be laughing you're already in a bottle two days later physical things start happening in the earth to force him to confirm to what has been programmed after one week the man becomes a toy to her because the realm of the spirit must so you look at a woman who is barren it may look like you just touched her stomach but it's more than that mysteries were programmed in the spirit he said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man he says the power of the highest brothers and sisters i came to prophesy to someone it will be a quick walk oh it will be a quick walk it will be a quick walk i tell you except it's not the god i told you that the remaining services don't miss them they will be help them please they will be strongly prophetic services strongly prophetic services it will be a quick walk there is a mystery that can push men false prophecy push men it is possible that in one day something can happen to you and you will turn and say god i'm sorry for doubting you when it was time for the animals to enter the ark of noah he didn't call one of them something was manipulated in the spirit all the animals started lining up regardless of their hostilities they lined up and came quietly listen let me tell you something the day i learned the vanity of the physical realm compared to the spiritual realm i stopped wasting my time about physical things trust me i really mean it i saw how helpless the physical realm is that a body without a spirit is dead i stopped wasting my time those who do business do it in the spirit realm they program things in the spirit realm and just watch like strangers how things manifest you program favor and you come and see strangers bringing blessings and people say how is it happening You see what is happening in this ministry submit to you it was programmed it's not a coincidence something took you from where you were and brought you here it's not just that you like a man no it's a mystery that is the same thing that will put a baby in the barren womb it's not when a man meets his wife that she gets pregnant to a man meets his wife to give the child physical form do you believe what i'm saying because let me tell you something one of the things we are going to do tonight is to change some things there are results that are wrong something programmed it it may be our ignorance it may be something i bring you a message of hope the realm of the spirit is still there that means there is still an ability to access it please sit down i'm just trying to compose myself my spirit is boiling this night listen listen i have experimented this thing too many times too many times too many times you can program favor you can program breakthrough listen you can program judgment on the wicked you can program speed the word of god is an instrument of creation you can create realities that were not there when you hear people testify it's not like the testimony was waiting somewhere a word created it when you are programming mysteries you don't attach a face to it the wisdom of god will create the actors of that mystery in the physical realm you don't say god bless me through my uncle uh -uh. i have accessed the principles that brings a blessing it is god that will start sourcing for the men that will act the movie that will bring your breakthrough he can use a donkey 
he can use stone it doesn't matter the most important thing is that let it come are we together yes. ah, I tell you believe me brothers and sisters when I tell you there are more angels on this ground than people sitting there are more angels angelic presence I don't know if it's because of what I'm teaching tonight but I prayed for strange intervention angelic interventions and the Lord is just opening my eyes and I'm seeing that there are numerous angels battalions of angels every time God opens do you know why when I speak like this people start manifesting under the anointing because you see when you are open to the realm of the spirit portal is created immediately do you understand and when that portal is created there must be an effect remember when Paul Saul now saw Jesus those there did not see but there was an effect from the realm of the spirit I'm explaining it because it's nothing strange but I stand and I see angels inside outside like this i'm even on that fence you are seeing i'm seeing all kinds of things happening and this is by the power of the spirit i believe that not all the angels are the same they are according to their ranking and their functions according to what kind of intervention must manifest because see our challenges are not the same i know some of you may not have issues but let me tell you there are people the issues you have require recovery restoration judgment on somebody so there are angels that are allocated for that kind of thing was it not an angel that used hailstone and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight please help them Jepreketo sadabala ko sambriata kata jegedeketo ko subriata jepres kata barota sabala ko leketa ko sabarote sabash enda kato kata bakata lekato sedeketi jiketo skibata karia mande katos I release angels strange ministry of intervention brakoto soto keta barata zegete kata by the authority of the most high angelic interventions over lives and families it must end tonight in the name of jesus is the year of triumph it must end tonight thou shall arise thou shall arise thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion thou shall arise god is arising over a family god is arising over a family Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You see, Ba, when you come before God's presence, the Bible tells us that upon Mount Zion many things happen. The innumerable company of angels. These things are not fables. The Bible is not a book for religious people. It is life. It is true. It is our own belief that has made it look like a storybook. That you come to his presence and there is a strange intervention. I say it again in the name of Jesus. As I begin to teach, I have not finished. But in Jesus name, I release the ministry of angels. I release the ministry of angels that whilst the teaching is going on let intervention start in the name of Jesus Christ 
strange interventions strange interventions please sit down if you can please help those outside very quickly I will give us four keys let's use 10 minutes sorry I will not be explaining it in depth I want us to pray I want us to pray I want us to pray I feel the spirit of prayer here there are four keys to provoking divine intervention every time you are in a situation where you need the help of heaven urgently do these four things and you will change the tides in a way that will surprise you listen brothers and sisters as you learn these mysteries please use them don't be too big to use them be childlike and apply them you will be surprised these are not cunningly divine fables. These are things that I do myself. They are not necessarily things I'm just telling you just for, for, you know, just the sake of it. The first thing to do when you are in need of strange intervention is engage in the ministry of prayer. Number one, please quickly, prayer. I'll give you two scriptures and then we'll, we'll be able to look at two. Write it down, please. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Talks about Peter. Don't, don't project it. I just want to hurry up. In Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11, the Bible tells us how that James was caught by Herod. He was beheaded. And when it pleased the Jews, he now caught Peter and locked him. And then the Bible says the brethren began to pray. Whilst they began to pray, an angel came into the prison, brought Peter out. Peter even thought he was having a vision until he took him out and then peter was free we see that prayer was part of the instruments that were used was used to bring strange and divine intervention acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 please write this down acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 it's a long reading don't project it just write it down acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 this was um a scenario where Paul casted out the demon from the lady that was using divination to prophesy and then the people got angry and they mobbed them you know and then the Bible says that they chained them and they were kept under the custody of a jailer then the Bible says Paul and Silas prayed and they sang and the Bible says everyone in the prison had them all of a sudden there was an earthquake and then the Bible says the things broke and all doors open. I like that. All doors. It didn't say some doors. When the chain broke, all doors. The doors of the prison of other people connected to them also open. All doors open. Prayer can open doors. James chapter 5 verse 13. Maybe you can project that. He said, is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. Prayer is the... Re biblical recommendation for affliction if any of you afflicted he said let him pray so whenever you are afflicted the key is to pray you may not know what to do i'm teaching you what to do now but regardless of what the situation is pray especially engaging in the spirit the most the most sound way to engage warfare prayers especially is to pray in the spirit first as you pray in the spirit the holy spirit begins to construct the scriptures in your mind you will not utter them just as words you will utter them as prophecies that's what we live to bring the result so the first key is not just to start talking uh, you take out time and pray in the spirit that's why it is important to be filled with the holy ghost with a clear evidence of praying in tongues it's not a phenomenon for pentecostals there is a dimension of victory you will never be able to command are we blessed is any among you afflicted has any of you received a bad report has any of you been told that you have so 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 time to live has any strange spirit appeared to anybody and said you will not see Christmas so when others are rejoicing don't join them the key is not to get up and cry has any stranger come to you while you sleep and try to molest you and you just got up and said this thing has come again no sir has the door for close towards you so the people who used to help you suddenly have changed the people who used to like you suddenly have changed 
The doors that used to bring you blessings have changed. Something is suddenly happening to your spiritual life. Prayer zero. Word life zero. You need an intervention. Prayer. The scripture I want us to read now is Psalms 18. Never forget this scripture. It's one of the arsenals that I have for my personal um, it's a scripture that has blessed me. I have prayed this scripture. If, if this scripture was a shook, by now I would have, maybe the soul would have eaten into pieces. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Psalm 18. Don't ever forget that scripture. Don't ever forget it for as long as you live. If you are a leader going far, this is a chief tool that you need. We are going to read from verse 1 to 6. Then I'll pick for you the verses we are reading. It's a long verse. Ready? Please give it to us. One to six. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Listen. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord. I will do what? call upon the Lord in prayer who is worthy to be praised so by calling upon him shall I be saved from my enemies verse 4 the sorrows of death compass me this is a man in trouble and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid the sorrows of hell compass me about the snares of death prevented me in my distress hallelujah I didn't discuss it with people who cannot help me. I called upon the Lord and cried upon unto my God. He heard my voice from out of his temple. And my cry came before him. Even to where? Even to his ears. There is a kind of cry that enters the ears of the mighty God. Let's jump to verse 14. Then to 17. Then 40 to 45. It's a quick reading. Verse 14. Yeah, he sent out his arrows. God has arrows. So, hey, look up. I learned this. I was checking arrows. You know, arrows that fly by day. And then I found out that it's not only the devil. God, the Bible says, yeah, this is him intervening for me. These are part of the forces from his cabinet of judgment that he can release. He says he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. 17. Please give us 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Verse 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 42. We're really reading to 48. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind and did cast them out of the dirt in their streets. 43. Oh dear, media. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. And thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Pastor, you need this for your ministry. Oh. When you open a branch in a locality that you don't know, there are people who need to come and As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. 45 verse 45 the stranger shall shake, fade away and be afraid out of their close places now 47 to 48 is a scripture i don't want you to ever forget ready go ahead give us well go to 47 go to 47 it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me who did it who did it he says it is God that avenged me and subdued the people under me. 48. He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me. 
thou has delivered me from the violent man divine intervention as a man of god there are wicked forces day and night to destroy you as a leader there are wicked forces but when you catch this and catch the revelation you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and the lord will be with you mysteriously you will not travel and sit down and be shaking will a car jam me will it break my leg will it break my head no sir rest and quietness on the strength of scripture everybody say prayer we need to learn how to call upon the Lord. Listen, do you know most people don't know how to call upon the Lord? They know how to lament. Hey, oh, you are not calling upon the Lord. You are shouting a lamentation, a, a strategy for lamentation that you inherited. He said, Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift up my soul? Oh my God, let me not be ashamed, though. Let not my enemies triumph over me. There is a way you can pray with God. Sometimes like Anna, you can't even shout. It's not something. You, you just lie down and say, Oh God, oh God, deliver me from the shame of the wicked. There are enemies that are waiting to see you fail so that it will be their prophecy fulfilled. Lord, confound their, their counsel. And God will say, it got to my ear. I had it. I'm on my way coming. prayer number two the second key when you want to activate the mystery of divine intervention is to engage praise with understanding praise 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 as an instrument of warfare and praise as an instrument of faith praise as an instrument of warfare but that you are blessing him in advance listen this revelation is fast becoming a national anthem in the body of christ people are suddenly coming to the realization that praise can work wonders you know people don't know why the presence of god is still mighty in africa it's because africa is a praising continent yes yes sir yes sir they laugh at us and think that when we are dancing is nonsense praise is a mystery you want to turn around your situation no matter what you do if you have not praised there is no lord believe me lord give us understanding psalm 22 verse 3 it says thou art holy thou that inhabitest the praise of zion god makes the praise of men his habitation but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest the praises of joshua selman listen i've taught us how to praise you don't praise god without dancing that that is nonsense you are you are singing a national anthem it's when you are reciting national anthem that you stand and put your hand on your chest moving your body is not a sign of it's not you are not you have problems you can cry but still praise are we together is this is a it's a powerful mystery i want you to learn our father bishop david Oedeko, when he almost had a few weeks ago he almost had a plane crash that would have taken his life as soon as that happened they declared praise i said oh dear spiritual intelligence let me tell you what other people would have done they would have organized a cocktail party and said you know we and the devil, the devil said that's i'm coming back praise praise is one of the most powerful ways to disgrace the devil because you see let me tell you one of depression is the absence of laughter and joy satan uses when people are about to die there are few people who die smiling most people are depressed then they keep quiet he says that the joy of the lord shall be your strength so when there is no joy your spirit becomes broken and the bible says a broken spirit dry yet the bones you don't praise god when things are going well you praise god to make them go well listen 
you don't praise God when when things are going well and you praise God it's called thanksgiving thanksgiving is the dance you give and the testimony you give when things have manifested but before they manifested it's called perfected praise praise with understanding Lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise Lord you are so good you are exalted as the Lord most high hold on listen let me tell you what Satan will tell you the moment you sing that he will tell you is it not your sister that just died is it not five carryovers we are seeing or oh God did they not just sack you ah, the gentleman that has been promising to marry you is it not by 8 a.m. this morning he says not doing again the devil brings it because he knows you see satan knows that we function in the realm of the flesh the senses are we together now so he brings things that resonate with your senses when you see them you are now depressed but that's the time anytime you are praising god satan says why are you praising him he says, no reason i'm praising him to create my testimony you see that listen corporate dancing and praising is good but you must learn to do this thing alone if it means you trusting god to get one small room for yourself for the purpose of praise is worth it oh is worth it reserve the forty thousand for shoes and use it to pay for a small room put worship wake up in the night because there is personally me i don't have time to do that dance and praise in the afternoon all kinds of calls distracting in the night oh dear oh dear ask god what i do in the night yes yes sometimes i carry koinonia documents drop it on the ground dance before it and shame the devil i carry my phone put it there I'm not dancing before them I say, Lord, you are great. I dance before you. People are coming from everywhere. Rain or no rain. Publicity or no publicity. And God says, you are doing this for me. I say, Lord, who else will I do it for? And you are celebrating him. Lord, you are faithful. And you are worshipping him. You are sweating like a fool. And while you are doing that, God is dispatching angels. Okay? Make sure you wake that guy to transfer money to his account. That hundred thousand I gave you, I didn't tell you who to send it to. Send it to him. Oh, his mother is at home. For giving birth to him, send an angel there too. And my innocent mother is lying down. She'll wake up in the morning and say, Mama, where are you? Say, who are you? Say, just come. Take my praise. This our big manism has cheated us beyond imagination. This pride that you don't have results and you are still talking you know ah I, how can okay i agree that you can't you think i can dance look at me you think no 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 god i don't have that gift of dancing it's not a competition this is your destiny this is breakthrough if a thief puts a gun and says you should dance won't you do something some of us when we were in the world you know the kind of dance demonic satanic dance that you did for the devil for free that destroyed you you got drunk dancing it a spirit entered you dancing it i'm not saying you should dance all kinds of nonsense dance in the house of god but i'm saying there, there are times you need to learn to sing and dance alone with listen listen most people dance you can turn your dancing time to a nightclub and god will look at you and say you are wasting your time it is the revelation that makes the singing and the dancing profitable don't just move your body around just because you are happy. That, that's, that's entertainment. Brothers and sisters, there is the kind of dance that you dance with tears in your eyes. But you are doing it with understanding. Don't think you will only always be laughing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. No job for you. No job for your wife. No job for your five children. They are all graduates. You have prayed, oh, nothing happened. Brothers and sisters, try singing and celebrating God. Everyone in their room rejoicing. Jesus, you are full.
and you are just dancing let me tell you what will happen the lord will start bringing testimonies remember when a cow would have killed you in 1995 and you say lord i remember and you start dancing it you are you are compressing doubt because something is about to be created you would dance and dance till you fall under the anointing there and get up and clean yourself and be tired and sleep and wake up and drag yourself brothers and sisters you have programmed something in the spirit you will get up in the morning and just dress and say father thank you and get a phone call who is this i'm seeing a document that has been here four years on my table who are you so i finished for what did you read anyway it's not what you read where are you come quickly i like you ha you just know that praise is working praise is working let the people praise me psalm 67 verse 5 to 7 let the people praise me it's an instruction the earth has been programmed to deliver certain results but let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee verse 6 then shall the earth yield her increase and god even our god shall bless us you can stop there Zephaniah, it may be difficult for some of us to find, but just write media, please give it to us. Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's read 14 to 20. I hope we can just quickly hurry up. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 14. We're reading to verse 20. Listen, it says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. It's not talking about a lady, it's talking about human beings. You must read the bible prophetically when he says daughter find out what he means there are times in the bible all people are sons there are times all people are daughters are we together so don't think he's talking to ladies sing O daughter of zion shout O israel be glad and rejoice with all the heart O daughter of jerusalem we're reading to verse 20. the lord had taken away thy judgments and has cast out thine enemy the king of israel even the lord is in the midst of thee thou shalt not see evil anymore in that day it shall be said to jerusalem fear thou not and to zion let not thine hands be slack we're reading to verse 20. give us 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of thee. To whom the reproach of it was a burden. Verse 19. Behold at that time. I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out. I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Hmm. At that time, I will bring you again, even in the time that I will gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, say the Lord, you read that scripture and say, Lord, whether you understand it or not, I am dancing with this revelation that you are turning something. I can see everything. Hey, hey. For. Do you see everything? I can see everything. One more time. Can see everything. Turning around. Please sit down. When you go back home, continue. 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 Apostle, I don't have a house. Find a tree. Find somewhere. It is a place that will give you a house, my brother. I'm staying with neighbors. I don't want to disturb them. Find somewhere behind one rock. You don't have to shout and disturb the neighborhood. Just engage in praise. Glorify God. 
You may be tired, but it's called a sacrifice of praise. Brothers and sisters, do this and see how things will turn in your life. There's nothing the devil can do with someone who is full of joy and glory. This gloominess that you see people tie their face around, it doesn't bring breakthrough. It adds to your sorrow. You loosen up and say, Father, you are faithful. You are tying your face around and people say, why are you? Why should I not tie my face? But will you pay my rent for me? My brother, it's praise that will pay that rent. So you turn everything and rejoice. Let me tell you what many people will say who see you engaging this. <laughs> they say, don't mind all these men of God. They are turning you people to be stupid. You see that? But when you meet them for rent, they won't give you. If you want God's result, follow his methods. Number three, quickly. The third key to activating the mystery of divine intervention is called seed faith. Say after me, seed faith. Listen, I know that giving has been abused. Listen carefully, please. Outside, online, listen carefully. I know that giving has largely been abused because it has looked like some manipulation and journalists and bloggers have not done justice because they have mixed everything and made it look like giving and sacrifice is some gimmicks to corner money and give a man of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Something I do all the time, including today. Every time you are in a situation, listen please. Every time you are in a situation that only God can step in with understanding, haven't prayed, package a seed, speak to that seed and give it an instruction. And sow that seed, release. If you just sow money, it's bribery. It's not the money. Revelation. The Bible is full of the potent power of seed faith. Connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke God's hand for intervention. I've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry. I've done it countless times on behalf of myself, my family, my friends, people I love. Seeds. The seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it. Please listen to me. Don't think I'm asking you to give me money. No. There are people who when they hear this, they just frown their face. Not at all. Not at all. God has been faithful to me. Are we together? Listen. There are people who have turned their lives around overnight. If there is one thing I know in my little walk with God is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent. I promise you. I have seen people quarter to shame. Everything was against them. It was obvious they are finished. And they used their seed and turned the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine. My life is full of sacrifices. Psalm 126, don't turn there. Verse 1 to 6, you write it. That when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. The first six verses, the, la the sixth verse ends by saying, they that sow in tears. The whole verses are connected. Verse 6 is connected to verse 1. God turning away the captivity of Zion like a dream. He says that they that sow in tears will reap in joy. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, the Bible says, shall doubtless return, rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. It's not every seed. To be cheerful does not mean to laugh. To be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart. There are some times you will cry for the seeds you sow. Hallelujah. Someone came over to my place today and the Lord instructed him to bring me a seed. And quite a very serious seed. Just, you know, a military officer just came, dropped the seed. And when I saw it, the seed was in dollars. I said, wow, in this recession, this seed and the lord told me no 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 no. make sure you don't touch it this is your seed for something and the lord told me i started dancing i said thank you jesus this is it. 
when God gives you seed to sow, it's intervention. Getting the seed to sow is an act of God's mercy. That you say, Lord, I must provoke this, but I have no seed. Then he gives seed to the sower. Those who know only know how to eat anything plus their destiny, they keep getting bread. But those who want to create a future. Brothers and sisters, I have created realities in my life with seeds. I believe in the power of a seed. Listen, don't let people because of their cynicism. The imbalance, when a man creates an imbalance in scripture, you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused. You bring it to context and teach people. Brothers and sisters, a seed can change your life. Believe me. I have done crazy things in my life. I thank God that it's only God that reveals that that is only God that knows the heart of men. There are things if I tell you that I have done with seeds. Some of you, you are not related to me, but you will be angry. You will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession. Seeds. There was a year, I've shared it again and again. That God gave us an instruction. We were just resuming. Koinonia. And God gave an instruction. He said, sow everything. 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 I don't mean small. Sow everything. Let it go. I said, thank you, Jesus. You are ready to lift us. That is revelation. By faith, Abel offered. You offer by faith. You don't offer by, by tricks and all kinds of... No, no, no. And we release it. Brothers and sisters, it didn't reach seven days. Seven days. More than ten times that amount came. Seeds. I'm not saying you should give carelessly, no. But brothers and sisters, the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years. Nobody is moving forward in your family. You are just sitting down. And God is saying, look, you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice. One day you get angry and say, Lord, I am tired of this. Anna did not have money to give, but she said, Lord, let's do it. Give me the child. I've given the child already as a seed. And God said, it's a done deal. There was a king in the Bible who they wanted to slaughter and defeat. It was very clear the nation of Israel would defeat them. And he carried his son, his future, and slew the child. The Bible says an indignation rose up to heaven. Battle ended. When God wanted to redeem man, it was an issue of urgency. God carried Jesus, the lamb upon the throne, slew him. Jesus cried and God said, that's not the issue. Man must be saved. This greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us. Get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future. Get used to it. You may not have a seed, but brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there are many ways to give. Money is not the only seed. It's just the seed that can easily be exchanged. That's why. There are times that people have made radical sacrifices. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Principles of divine intervention. Trace your life at the moment where God gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes. And watch what happened. You just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going. I hardly share my testimonies. I stopped because I found out that it annoys a lot of people and I'm not ready to attract unnecessary, um, you know, people once they hear preachers talk, there are people who just get angry just like that. It's nonsense. Brothers and sisters, learn to sow seeds. But the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions. This is the mistake many of us have been making. You package a seed. Some of you come and join the line. Apostle, here is a seed I'm sowing. I always ask people, what is this for? And the people say, for nothing, just, I just feel like seeing you. That's a donation. 
That's a donation, brothers and sisters. All seeds are not the same. There is a seed you give to the poor. There is something it does to you. There is a seed that you give to widows and orphans. There is a kind of result. There is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are. If the word of God were a lie, I would have died sins. Because the risk I've taken with this word, it would have killed me sins. But I believe him. I believe him. When I sowed that seed today, I was happy. The joy that filled my heart. I await the testimony that comes from it. Wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled through sowing is a waste of time. It's, imagine now, somebody who didn't go to the farm. He has a land somewhere. He just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck and he just goes to an empty place. You will find wheat there. But whoever sowed January, February down to April is smiling right now because he knows it's harvest time. Brothers and sisters, I pray for us. May God kill greed from our life. This attachment to money, listen. This, many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money. It's a lie. Wealthy people in the kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it. Your seed is an instrument that creates your future. Hallelujah. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. I'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text. He sowed a seed. I remember it was when he sent me the text. Truly speaking, I remember. They sowed seeds and I was opening the envelopes. Most times it takes, it honestly takes a while. Maybe some days before I even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it. And I opened the envelope and I saw five naira and a letter. The guy said this five naira was his Isaac. I know you will laugh and say, hey, this stupid boy, no. I respected that because that, that thing I knew will create a harvest. And the guy, I opened it and wrote some things like that. And then I just felt led to pray for him. Do you know it didn't reach two weeks. The guy sent me a text and said, I have never in my life seen favor like this. Five naira. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. Somebody was tired of where. How many jobless people have not shown anything? And they keep moving around with CV. What must tell you the devil is fighting you? You carry a seed and say, God, please. I'm married with three children. No job. This mockery must end. I drop this and I tie it to my job. And then praise around that seed. Praise around the seed. And your brothers and sisters say, so this is what they are teaching you. This is how these stupid men of God keep eating your money. And all of a sudden, whoosh, the heaven opens. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. You are praying to buy land. Oh Lord, please give me two million naira to buy land. I now have 150,000. Just top it up for me. And God says, you mustn't buy it. Just learn. Let me show you. And all of a sudden, someone stands up and blesses you. I think it was you, Ejimi, I was showing you. Was it yesterday? I was showing him the documents of a property that was given to me recently. I said, God, what is this? What is this? For as long as you sow, whether you like it or not, the law is that you must reap. So if you have not sown anything, stop, stop saying, God, where is my harvest? And he said, what, what are you saying? A woman who does not take in, is she expecting a child? No, sir. No, sir. Schedule seasons of breakthrough in your life. Your seed is a weapon. Not just your prayer. Your seed is a weapon. Your seed is a weapon. One mama called me one time. I was led by God. Honestly, I felt so. I didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman. And she was praying for divine financial intervention. I said, mama, please, I want you to sow a seed. Not to me. I, I, I would never have the effort tree to tell that woman to sow into my life. I'm sure that woman will be older than my mother. I said, please try, connect with a seed. And the woman said she doesn't have anything. I said, it's not true, mama. There is something you have. What do you do? She said she farms yam. 
I say carry four or five tubers of yam. Find any church. I said, which church is close around your area? She said, there's living faith. I said, go there. Find four tubers of yam. Tie it and be praying. Singing any song in your language you know. While you march to the pastor's, um, uh, what do you call it? The pastor's office. Whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business. Only a stupid man of God resents the seed of a desperate believer. It's not whether you are more than 50% of the things people sow into my life. I don't need it. It's not for me. I recognize what it is. Is God speaking to someone? Seed faith. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. In 1 Kings 17, when our time is gone, just write it. We don't have to project it. 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 6. From verse 7 to 16. 1 Kings chapter 17, when you read from verse 7 to verse 16. The Bible talks there about Brook Cherith when it dried during the famine. And the Bible says that the Lord told Elijah to go to a place called Zarephath. And he said there was a widow there. God wanted to intervene in that widow's life. When the prophet got there, he said, give me water. She was running to go and bring water. And he said, please, and make some bread for me. And the woman said, I'm sorry, man of God. I respect you, but honestly, this is the last one I'm about to eat with my son so that we'll just wait until we die. And the prophet said, no, no. When you give, it does not end. When you give, you extend the life of whatever it is. The prophet was teaching her. He said, make it for me first. In our generation, they say that's a heartless and wicked, devilish prophet. But the moment she did that, the Bible says she lived off what was there until the famine was over. You can change your life. November, December is too short a time. No. November, December is too short a time, brothers and sisters. God can step into your life and do something in your life that you cannot imagine. Don't be surprised that you'll be celebrating New Year in your own house. Whereas right now you don't even have land. I'm talking to believers. Don't be surprised that you can give away up to 5, 10 million by December. Whereas what you have in your account now is not up to 10,000. Listen, I'm not talking nonsense. I'm not stupid. Don't be surprised. That after 10, 20 years that your wife has been buried, that she's going to celebrate New Year, two months pregnant. You do every calculation you know it's not up to two months, but she's two months pregnant. Don't ask where the child came from. That right now, you are not even sure where your certificate is because you are tired, you have thrown it somewhere. But don't be surprised that you will be managing a business by the end of this year. Is it not God we are talking about? Is it not the God of heaven we are talking about? Number four. The fourth key is the power of prophecy. The power of the prophetic. Weapons of supernatural intervention. The power of prophecy. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 8. We've already discussed it. Just write it down. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 8. The story of Elisha in Samaria. And the abundance that came to an entire land. Because there was a divine intervention by prophecy. Hosea chapter 12 from verse 13. Please give it to us. The Bible says and by a prophet. Listen carefully. And by a prophet. It says... The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. How did they come out of Egypt? By a prophet. Not by God. You would think God will say, oh, by me. Yes, it is by God. But the instrument that he used was a prophet. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Listen. Listen. There are challenges that people go through in life that is totally needless. If only they can locate a genuinely anointed prophet of God 
you can come out of a situation overnight. Some battles are totally needless. They are products of pride and ignorance. Take note of these things I'm saying. Pride and ignorance. Some battles are totally needless. There is enough grace and anointing to bail people out of it. A gentleman had been writing, I think it was Waieko or Neko, I can't remember, for over maybe six, seven years. I remember one time he came and he was crying. I didn't allow him to finish. I said, that's all right. Let me pray for you. It is done. And he just went and the guy testified that truly speaking, he answered nonsense in the exam because his brain had, he had stretched the thing. He has passed the age that he should be concentrating to be reading for work. And yet it came out, he had all credits like that. And he said, truly, this is my result. I said, of course, it's not your result. God gave you to help you move forward. Of course, it's not your result. When other people are celebrating their intelligence, you go to God and say, thank you, this one you gave me. There are things when other people are saying, I got, you turn to God and say, this one came from you. Prophetic intervention. Brothers and sisters, God still has anointed men. No? Yes. An anointed man is not a man who speaks well. An anointed man is not a man who throws people under the anointing. There are people who are privileged by the election of grace. That God has put ancient, ancient possibilities within them for the sake of the body. Your own price is to believe. They may not look like it, but they carry it. What you have, you have. It was given to you. Are we together? I truly believe that someone tonight, I told us the remaining services for this year will be very strongly prophetic services. And it will start from tonight. Just the five minutes or so we have to pray. And then I speak over your life. When prophecy comes, receive it. Receive it. You can reject it. But you can receive it. Do you know? I listen to every koinonia message. This message now that is being preached. It's not Joshua Selman. This is the man of God teaching. Joshua Selman will listen to the man of God later in the week. And when it's time to prophesy, I will lift my hands and receive and pray in tongues. Otherwise, I will keep blessing and the anointing that came from the throne through me. Through me. I must also receive it by faith. Prayer point number one. Father, I am tired of where I am. I am tired. You are a changer of people's lives. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I am tired of where I am, truly speaking. Lord, this year will not end like this. I've not yet seen any notable testimony in my life. And the year is about to end. Oh, God of heaven, arise, arise. Those online pray. Lord, the favor you said I will walk in, I am yet to see it manifest, and it is November. The prosperity that you said I will walk in, Lord, I believed you, I still believe you. So, desperate people we want more, more Lord lift your voice and pray we are desperate people we want more, more Lord. we are desperate people we want more, more Lord. we are desperate people Tired of the status quo It's gotta be more than this It's gotta be more, gotta be more Gotta be more than this For desperate people do desperate things And we press in 
Gotta be more Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over every mountain that stands between me and my result. Hear the word of the Lord. Be crushed into pieces. Lift your voice and pray. Shakatoko sote parata. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of the Lord. I speak over every mountain, mountain of witchcraft, mountain of delay. I crush you by the God of heaven. Those outside pray, online pray, I decree and declare, hear the word of the Lord, who are down mountain before Joshua Selman. I command you become play. Shena masadia, shena masadi na mana na maliara bala bosada na maliara. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every promise. Hanging in the realm of the spirit, I prophesy by the mystery of divine intercession. You must manifest now. Lift your voice and pray. Find expression. I give you a body, my breakthrough. Find expression, my lifting. Find expression, my advancement. Find expression. I give you a body, manifest in my life. Pray, find expression. I've seen you in my dreams. I've seen you in my visions. I command you to manifest. 